Hiller football fans, where tonight your Hopkins and Hillers will take on the Milton Wildcats. Hi, I'm Rick Desina with uh, Don Lehman in the booth. And uh, tonight at Chick Welch Field, Dave Hughes Stadium, we have the South Sectionals, again with Hoppington versus Milton. Don, this is the first matchup of the playoffs where we have two winning records going against each other. Uh, two high-powered offenses and two pretty good defenses, so it should be a dogfight. Uh, this is this is exciting stuff here, Rick. And um, you know, I, I, I was going to say this is this is football weather, but it's yeah. actually not. It's, <laughs> it's skiing weather. Skiing weather. It's it's middle of January, early February weather. Um, but it, it's uh, we've got two really really good teams here. You've got Hopkinton coming in at eight nine, and nine, nine and oh. nine and zero, oh, um, who have just really just dominated most of their opponents. So they've only had a couple close games. Their defense has been fantastic. They're sitting on six shutouts for the year. Uh, offensively, they can score quickly. Um, they have a, a lot of skilled players, a lot of veteran players. Milton, again, Rick, you know, this is just like anything. Uh, these playoff games, we personally don't know a lot about these teams that are coming in here. Just visually what I'm looking at here, I'm looking at a team that looks kind of have they, they have some size. We've got the scouting report on them. They know we know it. They have some speed. They have an, uh, a seven and one record, so I'm expecting a great game here tonight. Yeah, as you said, Hoppington comes in at nine and 4 and zero in the TVL Large as TVL Large champions. Milton comes in seven and one, three and one in the Bay State Herget. Um, like you said, they have the offenses. Hoppington averaging 24.8 points a game. Milton 30.4 points a game. Giving up on the defense, a stingy 5.4 for Hopkinton. Milton, a very good 13.8. They do play in the Bay State League, which generally is considered a stronger league. Their only blemish is a loss to Natick, who is a, a very strong team that lost in the playoffs to a very strong Bridgewater Raynham in Division Two. So right. this is, should be a, a premier test for the Hillers as they try to make it to 10 and 0. Well, you know, when you when you climb up the mountain, Rick, it gets uh, it gets steeper with every step. Um, the talent and, and the teams that you play are, uh, you know, become better every time. I mean, I'm looking over here, and, I, you know, I haven't looked at the roster much yet, but it looks like they do have some size. This, we were just kind of touching on it, Rick. I think this is the coldest game that mm. I, I've been at here, you know, at least in recent memory yeah. uh, in the last six, seven years. Um, it, it, it came as advertised. It's cold out there. Yeah, especially when you think last Friday was 75 degrees. I was playing golf. Well, we, <laughs> we've had we've had such wonderful weather this fall, so it's hard to complain about it. But um, you know, it, it's going to be the team here that that puts the weather aside, doesn't make it a factor. Um, that's really going to have the best chance to win this game. Yes. So as we talk a little bit about the format, we are now into the South Sectional Finals. This is the first time a Hiller team has ever made it this far in this uh, format. Um, their only other playoff meeting with Milton, 2013. We had kids on that team. A 26-22, yep. to 22, it was a thriller down, Hiller win. Down 22 nothing. Yes, and a, and a late kickoff almost sent Milton to uh, – uh, a, a kickoff return almost sent Milton to the victory circle uh, at a late uh, tackle deep around the 30 yard line uh, to keep that uh, victory intact. In fact, uh, the winner of this game um, will get a, a little sectional trophy and then move on to the Melrose Marblehead Division IV North sectional final game, which is being, being played tonight as well. So as we as we wind down, um, as you said, Don, looks like they have a, maybe a, some better numbers over there at Milton. Um, they've got a pretty they've got a pretty big team. Um, I don't you know who knows they could be dressing their freshmen also, uh, which you know we don't do. Um, but uh, they look like they have some good numbers over there. Which I'll tell you, Rick, in this day and age, I I, I would I love seeing big football teams. I hear we you. need more you know more players. We're gonna break for the national anthem and we'll be right back. Champion. Participating student athletes, coaches, and contest officials have worked diligently to prepare for tonight's competition. Please show your appreciation by demonstrating good sportsmanship and respect for all in attendance. Ensure that your behaviors reflect the values that should be identified with these student athletes. Assume responsibility for your behavior and the behavior of those around you. If you require assistance, please call upon an MIAA school or security official. At this time, we would like to ask all fans in attendance to please be seated. 
Throughout our country's history, a brave few have answered the highest call. Our nation has persevered through the leadership and sacrifices of men and women who have served or are currently serving in our armed forces. We invite both veterans and current military personnel to please stand and be recognized. We thank you for your service. Now, we would like to ask all fans in attendance to please rise, remove your hats, and direct your attention to the North End Zone as we honor the National Anthem. Well, as we get ready after the national anthem, as Don said, it's in the mid-20s and with a stiff wind. And anybody who's been at the Clocker baseball game early spring, this is that wind that blows across the field out to left field, and it's coming in a pretty good clip. So throwing the ball might be a little bit of an issue because it's a crosswind, Don, not north and south. It's east and west. Without a doubt, Rick. It's going to be um, – it's definitely going to affect uh, how these games are, how this game is played. Um, it's going to be difficult to throw the bombs, uh, and it's going to be difficult punting. You're going to have to, uh, you know, consider maybe going for two as opposed to kicking an extra point. It's going to, you know, it's it's going to be fun, and uh, you know, we got a little um, Guns and Roses to kick us off here. Let's go, baby! And it looks like we have uh, Milton's track star Smith Charles deep. Number 16, and I can't see the number on the far side, maybe number 17, Isaiah Woodley. As yeah, Kelly gets ready to kick Don. This team came in advertised with some speed, which honestly, Rick, we have not seen too many teams that can match Hiller's speed, so it'll be interesting. Squib and kick. it's a little bit of a squib kick, and it's away from Charles, and it's picked up by Woodley, and he stays up the right sideline, and he's going to go out of bounds somewhere around the 30-yard line. So it's early to see, but it looks like Hopkinton's going to take keep it away from the track star there and uh, let the other kid return it. Nice um, ground ball kick by Kelly and uh, gave him pretty good starting position, 30-yard line, so we'll see what happens. Looks like it's going to ultimately be spotted at the 28-yard line. Number six, Luke McKenneman comes in as the quarterback, the junior. Rose a bump a, a – a trio of quarterbacks that started the season. Looks like he had a good game, and he remained as a starter as the season went on. The Wildcats come out very similar to the Hillers. Pistol formation with two receivers to each side. And it's a straight-ahead dive up to Charles Smith. is gone right up the middle, Don. He had a big hole up the middle, and nobody's going to catch this young man. That was a 72-yard touchdown run on the first play, and that's uh, something we haven't seen. No, that, uh, we have not seen that, Rick, and that was, um, that was a well-executed dive up the middle. Um, it looked like they made a good block at the point of attack, um, sealed our linebacker, and, um, you know, number 16 had a, had a, a burst that, uh, you know, we didn't have an angle to, 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 to make that tackle, and that's an early touchdown for Milton. Yeah, and it's going to be a tough angle to get, too. That kid is pretty fast. Yeah, we have some speed, and nobody even got near him. No, nah, that, that was um, – that, that, that was he's the fastest kid I've seen from an opposing <laughs> team so far. So it looks like they're kicking here, Rick. They got a lefty kicker, and they're going for it. 
And it looks good. And it looks like number nine. Number nine, Xavier Fisher with the extra point. So Charles Smith with the 72-yard touchdown run, or Smith Charles actually, I'll probably do that all night long. And that's a, that's a tough way for the Hillers to uh, get the game started. So they're gonna have to come back down right away. Forget about it. You didn't think this was gonna be a seven or nothing game anyway, nah. so forget about it. No, nah, I mean, it's, it, it's gonna take more than seven points to beat this Hiller team. And you know, I mean, these guys, things have come kind of easy, at least in recent weeks. Um, I think that could be a wake-up call. I don't think it's e definitely going to be that easy for Milton. I can tell you that much the rest of the way. So there you go. Uh, they got the Hiller's attention. So let's see if we can what we can do with the ball now. Well, I can tell you, if uh, Smith Childs was cold, he warmed up in a hurry, sprinting 72 yards. He looked like he had a pretty good burst. So I'm not exactly sure what the confusion is on the Milton side. They don't. They're not coming out to receive the ball. Maybe they want the game to end. <laughs> that would call call it a day. We're done. <laughs> I think they're cold. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. They have a uh, looks like a little tent over there with a heater. They got a band. Um, they came. They came prepared. <laughs> they came I, prepared. I will say that. <laughs> we'll I, and I love it. I I think it's great. Uh, that is uh, that is good stuff. I mean, we have some propane heaters over here as well. But to bring their band, it's a cold night out there, and that that's a uh, you know that's a tip of the hat right there. That's football. That's, Absolutely. That's, that's you know. Division one type football where the band mm -hmm. travels with the team, and uh, that's that's pretty good stuff. Yep, yep. It's it, it's good to see. Now, um, you know what what we can't get here in, in Hopkinton. I don't think we, it'll happen to these kids. Oh, they're barring a tee. It here. looks like they forgot. We should have made them hold it. Should have <laughs> made them hold it on the toe and the coach, and hold it with the finger. Coach, I can't kick. I don't whiz the tee. Now, that's see, that's just good sportsmanship <laughs> yeah. right there. I think if I would have been coach, I would have told him to just hold it on his toe. <laughs> Somebody's going to get some ribbing on the way home. Uh, that's for sure. <laughs> but you know, it, th th this senior, we've got a lot of seniors here, and I, I you know, we're not going to get too rattled here. John that was offsides on, the on them. That you could probably do that all the time. A tough bounce, and ends up with Deloya. He's got it. He's tackled it around the 27-yard line. And I don't know what that referee was doing, but that was offsides on Milford. Mil uh, Milton. Milton. Yeah, they got the red colors. They could be like Milford. So well, it's hard to tell, Rick. You know, we don't really have a flag. It's hard to tell which the wind. I know which it's way it's coming, but it, it's nice. To, it would be nice to know. Well, you could open up a window, but we're not no, going to let that we're happen. Doing that. We're no, not going to do not that. Doing, we're not, no, not no. Opening up any windows. No windows open tonight. So Ebert's in the backfield, and he's under center. Kelleher to start the game, and right up the middle, and that's a little different result than what the. Milton Wildcats had an air for his play. Ebert ahead for about three. Well, yeah, that's interesting that they went under center right off the bat, Rick. It looks like they're going to try and establish a line of scrimmage here um, and maybe grind it out as opposed to coming out with the spread and trying to throw. So we'll see what kind of game plan Coach Sullivan and Coach Gerard have put together. Yeah, you wonder if it's scripted or they're going to see what's going on, but he's coming back on the center. And, and over the years, this doesn't happen very – this has never happened to start a game in eight years. So mm -hmm. this is uh, interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. And a quick pitch to Abbott. He gets out to the outside and he gets the corner and he gains about 15 on the play. Gets out to about the 44-yard line. They started this last week with, you know, pulling Abbott into the backfield and doing a, you know, a, a two-back set with him, and he got a bunch of carries last week. He I, did. I didn't. I don't have it in front of me, but actually I do, but I can't read it. Because <laughs> <laughs> my I either can see distance or short, and not not both. But um, you know, they they used that a lot last week with getting the ball in Will's hands in the backfield, and that was a successful play first down. Yeah, and they run on. Tight again, and right up the middle again with Ebert, and he gets about two on the play. Yeah, Abbott ran a lot of that out of the jet sweep last week. He wasn't yep. really set in the backfield. This was almost like a, a lead block left by uh, Ebert when he did that. They, they're just doing their best to get the ball in his hands all the time. And here, if we're you know, in a game where it's cold and it's windy and you're not going to be able to throw, you've got to come up with ways to get the ball in number two's hands. Yeah, so it's second and eight at the 46-yard line, we'll call it. And again, they're tight with uh, as Linquist to the right, and Abbott comes back in and sets in the backfield. 
And it's an option kind of thing, but he doesn't get much. Ryan Kelleher kept it. I don't know if it was a read or it was a design play, but uh, he gets about a yard in the play. That's going to be on third and seven. Yeah, Ryan uh, runs the ball. Looked like it. I was actually watching this action over here. Um, this cornerback, number 17, is not that big. He's he's not big. So um, he's matched out one-on-one. -on -one. It was Deloya out here, one-on-one, -on -one, no safety help. You got to watch that, and I might put somebody on with the, you know some height on this kid, especially if you get down in the end zone. Well, he's pretty confident about what's yeah, going he on. Yeah, he's he coming is. up on Mr. Abbott. Yeah, he is. They got, he got safety he's pretty help. quick. You can see what he was doing. And it's pi almost picked, and he's uh, Abbott kind of started to make his way upfield, and Kelleher tried to get him there, but number 17, Isaiah Woodley, just kind of drifted with him, and he can jump because he got to that ball. No, yeah, the kid's, got, the kid's playing with some confidence out there, 1-7. But yeah, Ryan kind of rolled right there. Will was covered. He had that safety over the top. Ryan tried to thread the needle there. Almost could have been better served tucking that in and, trying to get it by. I don't think he would have gotten the first down, but he could have gotten maybe about four or five there. It looks like they're going to punt because it's fourth and about seven. Eddie Hassel, the, the senior captain for the Wildcats, is back. We might call him Eddie Haskell yeah, tonight. Yeah, let's just go with Let's Haskell. get Eddie Haskell, It'll right? be easier. That will be a lot better. <laughs> One of my fan favorites. Okay, so he's a captain, so you figure he's going you know, to bring something to the table here. So maybe uh, oh, there's some sort of penalty here, right? There was a penalty. Yeah, five-yard penalty of some sort. Mm, Backs see. him up. Now it's fourth and about 12. Illegal forward pass. I'm I'm hearing a legal forward pass from the mm. official so in the must, booth. So he must have been over the line over of scrimmage. Over the line of scrimmage. Yeah, sure. he should have ran it. Maybe he wanted to. But, uh, a high wobbly kick. It's fair caught. Oh, and they got in each other's way, and they don't know if it uh, – He act, on, reacted like he, uh, like he touched it, but then they got away. Nice hiller bounce. That'll stop dead around the 21-yard line. Well, okay, um, you know, uh, let's see what happens here. I mean, you know, the, you couldn't have a worse start to a game as, you know, get, letting the opposing team score on the first play of the game uh, on a run up the middle. Um, hopefully these players came back to the sidelines, talked to the coach, figured out what happened there, and let's not let it happen again. We got game day coordinator Scotty Mackin coming up to the booth tonight. He's, uh, I know he's cold. He's happy to see us up here in the booth. Scotty, not exactly how we wanted to start tonight, was it? No, I got the no from uh, game day coordinator, Scotty Mackin. So McMinnon, he's got the uh, shotgun with three receivers, uh, running back to the left, two to the receivers with motion to the left. And hands it off to, to Charles, and he tries to the outside, but nothing doing. See, that's what uh, I would have. I would let that happen all day, Rick, because there hasn't been a team that's been able to get to the outside on Hopkinton. Um, you know, it was interesting the way they, they attacked us right up the middle there the first play. But for them to try and do the sweeps, that's going to be difficult. I don't care how much speed they have because yeah. Hopkinton will match it. That brings up second and, second and nine. So we picked up one on the play. It's cold out there, isn't it, Scotty? Yeah. <laughs> he, he, that's why he's up here, I think. He came up early. Rick, Normally I'm, he comes, up, he, he comes up in the second half. I think we're going to have a lot of fans up yeah, there. Yeah, no, I hear you. The game the minute drops off a screen and the receiver fell down. It was a, I can't see who fell. Number 15, it looks like, was the intended target. Number 15 being Moses Moal. He fell down on the play, Don, and that could have been a dangerous play. It's, well, it, it, it could have been, it looked like yeah, Brown. Both ways. Both ways, because <laughs> Brown almost tipped it, and he almost grabbed it. Um, but then if number 15 would have been standing up and would have caught that, he had some space there. So, yeah. And we don't know how fast he is. Uh, it looks like they're calling timeout here. They're calling timeout. Who, who's calling timeout? What do you got? I don't know. He's no, he's looking at his, at his, uh, his, at his sleeve for the play. Okay. And McMiniman back to pass. He's looking over the middle, and he oh almost picked off by Linquist. He got a hand on it. Falls incomplete. Okay, that was uh, that's a nice development there. Um, it looks like their offensive line can play. Hopkinton has done a good job all year with. Uh, with McDonald and Brown and Cal Cousins getting pressure, and, and also with, with Hebert and the other Browns coming in from the linebacker spot. That uh, the Milton quarterback had plenty of time to throw it. Uh, Lindquist was in great position, came back from his linebacker spot, and that was a, that's a big three and out for Hopkins to defense. It is, and I can't see who's deep to punt, Don, but nice snap. 
Punts away, and it's away from Abbott, and he's going to let it drop, and it drops away from him and rolls. Gets down to about the 31-yard line. Don, that's what we've been talking about. I think they got to come up and make that catch. You know, fair catch it. You don't have to run everything. I know right. he was on the far side of the field. It was a little difficult. Right. But they just, just grab gained, it. they just gained 12, 13 more yards on the roll. Just grab that, grab that ball. You don't, don't let it bounce. Okay, so the Hills will start their second possession with 7:03 in the first quarter at the 31-yard line, their own 31-yard line. A more traditional look in the shotgun with Eber to the left. Kind of tight though. They're yeah, in the shotgun, but it's tight. Yeah, but they've been running tight. And we got a timeout possibly here. I got a whistle and a timeout. Timeout, Milton. You know, I, I often try to write these down, and then I forget. So well, there's I'm, one. I'll try and help you tonight, right, Rick. We'll, I go, we'll go T.O.'s. Here we go. I'll try and help you tonight. Milton, Hawkington, first half, and we got Milton's got one. All so, right, there we go. In the meantime, uh, the, you know, the starting offensive line for the Hillers, you've got uh, at left tackle, you've got Ben Powers, a junior. Uh, left, oh, here we go. Sorry. No, no, keep going. No. Right guard Stuckel, you got Cavello at center, Budatello at right guard, and McDonald at right tackle. And they had a, a crossing play in the meantime to Abbott, and nothing doing. Faked to Ebert and had uh, Abbott coming back, and we got a little scrumming going on, but uh, maybe one on the play. So sir, there I am, Rick, trying to straight, stay true to my heart and talk <laughs> about the line. And, uh, <laughs> and there they go. They, they give up a lot of penetration there. Number 75 for Milton looks like a pretty good size. Yeah, we don't have the there. heights and weights in the roster. No, we don't. Okay. But he's uh, E.J. Wilson, the offensive defensive lineman. He's only a sophomore, Don. Okay. Looks like he look, might be hard to move. You got Cavell, you know, it's not easy for a center, um, especially you know, now Now Kelleher's back under center. Yeah. So. And Abbott on the jet sweep, and he gets the corner. And he's got the corner, but he's oh, caught he by number out. 34. No, they're giving him the all Great. the way. All right. Tackled by number 34, Ryan Hoey, the junior. And Abbott got the corner, got it down to the Milton 36-yard line, 37-yard line. That was a quick handoff i mean i i didn't he had the ball before i even looked up and uh and will speed you know milton does have some speed but will speed obviously train you know he can hang here so he got the corner and he, i thought he might have stepped out of bounds i guess he didn't so uh, that was number 34 in the tackle he's a defensive end oh he's okay. got to be pretty quick yeah he's got his hand he, in the he, tackle he right ran on the ground right now yeah and it's straight up the middle to ebert and he cuts it oh he got drilled by number eight, Jamie Woods on the tackle. That was a um, that was a really nice block by Alex McDonald and, and uh, 23 Connor Hebert did a nice job reading that block and coming right off his butt and took it down for a nice first down gain. Yeah, so you got uh, a first down on the first down. So it's 5:35 to go in the first. Hill has got a nice drive going. Started at their own 31 yard line. Yeah, they took that first punch and here they go. They're punching back. He's on the center, and that quick handoff to, to Abbott gets almost nothing. If he he might have lost a yard or two on that. Yeah, if, it, it, that that jet sweep is especially that tight jet sweep. The way they're kind of running it there, that's not going to work if they're getting penetration from their ends. It's that's not going to work. And at all. he lost three on the play. Call it second and thirteen. It seems to be r working to the right side. They haven't done much to the left side. Well, you mentioned 34, so let's – or no, 34. Yeah, 34 was on the end. He was on this uh, – now he's now he's on the other He's side. on the other side right now. So they're running that, that double wing with Abbott in motion, and it's Ebert up the middle, and he gets a few. He's going to get back maybe five on the play, four on the play. This is closer to the Holliston War set that we have seen, you know? A little bit kind of the way they have that yeah, double Yeah, it's, it's a little it's a little more you know? spread. There's not a running – you know, we got another guy out. They have everybody with the tight ends. There's a few less linemen, but, yeah, you're right. A lot right. of misdirection, a, you know, misdirection right. stuff, which right. we don't normally run. A lot of. No, it's just recently we've started to um, implement that into the game plan. It's been more a lot more run and chuck kind of thing. Yep. So a little more traditional three receivers to the right. 
two to the right. Th three. You got Linquist in the slot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And this is could be one of those little. Oh, he's got Abbott coming across the middle. He had him, and now he's going to get sacked. And he's down. A loss of about two on the play. Yeah, the, the defensive line there for um, Milton just kind of overwhelmed the Hiller offensive line. Uh, they only were rushing four guys, and uh, they got the Ryan. Ryan tried to step up, but there just wasn't uh, there wasn't any room to move there. Yeah, he had Abbott early, but once the uh, he you know he's going to gain uh, gather a lot of attention as he cuts across the middle, and he did. That closed down pretty quick. You know, one thing you might want to look at, we're probably a little long now, but you got maybe go into that quick strike offense that they had, the little, you know, Linquist. Well, actually, I thought that would have been a good spot for Linquist just to curl yeah. up for the first down. But it's fourth and 12. The Hill is going for it out of the shotgun. And he throws down the right sideline. He's got Abbott. Oh, touchdown. Yeah. Oh, gosh. That's big He's time. Touchdown. Oh, they're talking. Hold on. No, Hold on. Don't, Wait. Don't, talk, don't talk to me, Raph. That's a no. touchdown. I guess he is. Oh, the, the, yeah, the, 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 the official on the right side didn't ever put up his hands, and he, he was the guy that had it. I he don't had know. him in his pockets. He's cold. Yeah, maybe. Uh, that was a touchdown. You know what? The, he he wasn't that open there, Rick. No. But Kelleher threw a heck of a ball. Abbott went up, grabbed it in his highest spot, and that's a that's a big time play by a couple big time players. Yeah, absolutely. So that uh, at fourth at, down at twelve. Hello, fourth, fourth and twelve. It brings the score to seven to six. Pekliuka coming on for the extra point. At three minutes at the third, uh, three minutes in the first quarter. That's Kelleher. This is a big extra point here. The, you know, the games like this. I mean, geez, everything is is kind of magnified. You know, the the pressure. Now you got the cold. Um, you know, the snap, the hold, the kick. Nothing is automatic in, uh, in the cold in weather like this. Yeah, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing is. So we call a timeout. Somebody did. Milton calling a timeout. We'll give Milton that timeout. I didn't see who called it. I'm not exactly sure what there is to talk over on the, unless they're trying to figure out what they want to do. Could if have been a fake a, or something. Yeah, or it could have been a play. Uh, you know, I don't know when they started the play clock because it kind of there was some talking down there. Oh, you think it was a Hiller timeout? Mm, I, maybe. I, I didn't see who called it. So that was a, I, I believe it was a 22-yard touchdown strike. Well, I, yeah. I don't, I it was somewhere around the 22. I don't know exactly where it was. That, um, that was just a nice throw. Nice throw, nice catch. They had him over here one-on-one, -on -one, and yeah. we'll beat the guy. And, but And that's the know. game today, right? One-on-on, -on -one, you're open. Just right. th throw it there. And now right. the kid the kid was in a trail technique, and he and he turned too late, and Abbott got it over him. But uh, And he got his feet down. Yeah. And it really wasn't even that close. It didn't look like from up here. I don't know mm -hmm. what the what the official was holding off on, and uh, it is it is good. Bagliuca with the extra kick. All right, so all right. Got, that's exactly what we wanted right there. Right. We got a, 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 a 69 yard drive that took up about three minutes, uh, and the Hillers just drove it down on all runs except for the touchdown pass, and uh, that's uh, kind of what you needed to do after that first play. They've showed a couple different formations. You know, they showed right under center, um, but they also went in their, um, you know, their conventional spread uh, offense. So they ran it both ways. You got the ball in Abbott's. I think it was kind of the Abbott show. Did anybody else? Yeah, Ebert, Ebert ran had a few runs, times. Right? Yeah, Ebert had a couple good runs actually, um, and uh, you know that was that was excellent job by the offense. Defense had done their job, got them three and out, got them in good position. Let's see if they can do it again. So Brendan Kelly. Gets ready to kick with Smith Charles and number 17, Isaiah Woodley deep for the Wildcats. And that's gonna go out of bounds. No, it doesn't. Nice, took a nice little turn. And it looks like number, f number 40 kind of went back. Number 40 being uh, William Crowley, the captain. Kind of went sideways after he caught it, but he's tackled somewhere around the 30-yard line. You know, I'm not really sure what the 
what the plan is there. I understand you want to keep it away from uh, Juju Smith Schuster. What's that guy's name? <laughs> Smith. That's a, I'm, I'm a, a true Hilla. <laughs> I mean, a true Steeler fan would only come up with that. That's for sure. Um, Charles but, Charles Smith is his name. Charles Smith. Uh, he actually Charles Smith was a basketball player at Pitt uh, back in '83. Uh, went on to yeah, the NBA. Only, many but you're years. the only person that leave, listen be remotely associated to this broadcast that would know that. Then he actually <laughs> went with uh, Rodman over to North Korea on some crazy thing. Uh, that's but, a that's a typical Pitt grad. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs> All right, here we go. First and ten. McManaman in the shotgun with trips to his right. And Woodley goes in motion, and he's going to throw, and he's he's going to be oh almost picked off by Abbott, who had a step of, in front of the receiver. He tried the one-handed grab, but couldn't quite get it. Yeah, the Hillers, you got three guys back there. You had Cooney. It looks like you had Hebert uh, trailing. Must the guy must have come out of the slot or or something, and then you had Abbott back there. So there was three guys covering two guys, and uh, Abbott almost came up with a circus interception there. Well, you know, at least we're watching a quarterback and a team that's willing to throw. Mm -hmm. and can't, you know, it looks like they can throw. Yeah, this um, the, the last two teams that have come in here I have not been impressed with. Um, so this team looks a lot more competitive. And it's a run straight up the middle, and he's bottled up. As Smith is, as Smith Charles is bottled up real quick. There's a little extracurricular activity. He's 78, giving a little push in there. Tough guy. Um... You know, D McDonald shed his block there, made a tackle there for really no gain. So now we got third and ten. Uh, how about another three and out would be huge right here, Rick. Third and ten from the 30-yard line. And they're going to have trips left, but they generally run somebody in motion. Ionelli is up tight. The rest of the defenders, and they might be defensive offside. And it's a free play. Yeah, that's going to be third and five, Don, I think. Uh, it should be. I, is there a flag on yeah, the Yeah, I see it over there. But I saw people moving, and they didn't stop the play. Yeah, no, it looked like for sure it would have been offside. Oh, yeah, there was a flag. Okay. Defensive offside. Yeah, you got to yep. watch the ball, so that gives you an indication that uh, that's in their arsenal, the old uh, double hut. Third down is more manageable yardage for the Wildcats. So I'm sure somebody from the sidelines is uh, – I would figure it would be Swanton or – Certainly Coach McLean from the defense. Watch the ball! <laughs> <laughs> well, it's one of those games you could, could be a little amped up. Absolutely, especially third and ten looking to make a play. So we got third and five. And Woodley doesn't know where to be. He's, am I in? Yeah, the, yeah. And they're going to call timeout. Tight. What are we they're going to call timeout. Oh, no, that's they, didn't, they didn't know what they were going to do, so Milton calls a timeout. Which could be their third. Yeah, so Don, um, we had a couple of players recognized last week um, with the Luke DeLoyer and Shane Cooney were both honored as Boston Herald Stars of the Week and Boston Globe Players of the Week for their Week 9 performance against Dartmouth. Both returning touchdowns, interceptions for touchdowns, the Proverbial pick six. Congratulations to them. Absolutely. It seems like it's every week there's been one or two Hillers that have been mentioned um, in, in the local sports pages. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, it's good recognition, but it's also, as we talked about before, the defense, it's somebody different every yep. week. It's not the same guy dominating in a position. And, uh, you know, aside from that run, Milton hasn't really done it. Milton hasn't really done a whole lot, so that um, looking that, for that well, to continue. I mean, that that play up the middle. I mean, we unfortunately saw that quite a bit last year, but I, that's the first time I've I've seen that this year. A, a play of that, um, a big play on this Hiller defense. I haven't seen that. So they got trips left, and they get the one of these teams that gets a signal from the uh, sideline, and now Linquist playing the cat and mouse game. Throws to the short side, and he's got a first down to number number 13, Eddie Haskell, the captain. We'll call him Haskell. I know it's Haskell, but it is what it is. No, I think they have their own announcers here. They can call him <laughs> by the right name. But, um, you know, this is clearly is a passing team here, Rick. I mean, we obviously saw they got a kid that can run, but 
Um, the defense that the Hillers are running here, I'm seeing, you know, you see Hebert in coverage, which we don't send our line, our outside linebackers back in coverage very often. So yeah. they got a lot of people out in the pattern. Oh, and screen. a little quick screen, and it's not – Oh no, it is not caught. I, I saw the uh, the guard keep on making his block. I thought he had the ball, but incomplete. First and ten from the – or second and ten from the 42-yard line. Uh, they're going to um, want to throw the ball. I don't think that they're worried about the – wind at all neither was hopkinton so um you know this this offense certainly looks like it's built to built to score 78 looks like a big kid wish i had his stats yeah, 78 74 i mean they got they got a pretty good size yeah up front. they do they do well, they like the two receivers to the left and the got running brown back to the left in coverage too well, and it's a handoff and nothing nothing doing as uh Charles Smith, or Smith Giles gets uh, tackled at about the line of scrimmage. Yeah, McDonald again did a great job there, and and, and he had uh, his buddy Anthony Farina finishing him off. Um, that was a nice play. I, I think they've solved that run up the middle <laughs> um, play. Uh, not a moment too uh, too soon. Yeah, so that'll bring up third and about eleven. So he lost one, and this is going to be this is a big play. They haven't really driven that far. They've got one first down, aided by the penalty. And they got trips to the left. So he's he's got a scramble, and he throws deep down the field, but nobody's there. And that's going to be Is that incomplete. grounding? I mean, is there no, 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 no. I mean, he was he just well threw it well over somebody's head. All right. Uh, so that'll bring up fourth and about 11 from the 41-yard line, forcing the Wildcats to punt the ball well with this uh with you know a game like this uh, a tight game a cold weather game field position is always a factor so yeah i mean you don't want to entertain anything here but a punt got abbott kind of in but, another uh, county yeah here. he's he's deep like he's going to get an nfl punt well but this he, is part of the problem i think you know he's just not he can't come and get those balls because they're you know he could have been closer and you can get that ball but that dies at about the 22 yard line Okay, so will the Hillers come out and try and grind it out a little bit? You know, I don't know if they look at Milton as a as a quick score type of team, and and we want to slow the game down, which normally it's just the opposite. I mean, we're kind of a <laughs> high scoring offense ourselves, and uh, and we usually just shut people down. So, be curious to see if they send Kelleher out under center and trying to run, grind it out a little bit here. Yeah, with 34 seconds to go, unless they have the quick score, they'll be. Heading in the other direction. I don't know which way is better in terms of the wind. I'm guessing the way they're going now is probably the better way to go. Figure it's coming at us. But more across up to the baseball field from yeah. where they're at. Ebert on the run. And he gets uh, about three, maybe two on the play. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of room there. Connor uh, squeezed out what he could. So that could be the last play of the, of the quarter. It uh, looks like. I don't think they're in any. Yeah, it looks here. like Ryan Kelleher is just kind of talking with Coach Sullivan, and that's going to do it. So we're going to come up field with the tie 7-7. Seven to seven. Now we've got a, a three-quarter game done. Yep. Um, that was a uh, that was a very good answer by the Hopkinton Hillers there. I mean, we're all a little bit shell-shocked there by the first play of the game going for a touchdown. Um, then the Hillers got the ball back there. Rick didn't do much on offense, had the punt. Defense came up with a huge three and out, and then, you know, the Hiller offense did their thing. Um, looks like we have a little bit of situation down here, Rick. A cheerleader may have gotten hurt. I oh, hope not. Um, I don't know what's Where are we on. here? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's something I don't see. On. Where are the rest of the cheerleaders? Oh, they're over here He's drinking yeah, hot chocolate, I'm sure. Yeah, hot uh, chocolate's going to be plentiful tonight. You know, it's sure. it, these stunts they do and all kinds of things, when it's cold and brittle, it's not uh, – it's probably not a lot of fun for them out there right now. No. No, and the cheerleaders don't get enough credit either. They, they, you know, they work just as hard as these players. They have just, actually, they have longer seasons. Yeah, they don't, they don't have an off season. No, they go right to, they go right to the basketball. And, uh, and they're just as athletic. I mean, uh, I've always thought over the years, cheerleaders don't get their, get their due. Okay, so we're going to start the second quarter with a second and about seven. Kelleher on the shotgun, quick pitch out to Ebert, and he's got the corner, and he turns it up, and he's going to be close to a first. Yes, he gets the first down with the forward progress. 
That was some nice blocking on the edge there by the Hillers. It's hard to see who it is, uh, but you had Stuckel out there. It looked like he was leading the way. Uh, McDonald's over there on that side. Um, you know, Hebert is quick when he has the ball in his hands, made a nice cut inside, and then he kept his feet driving to get that extra couple yards to get the first down. So we'll set it at the 33-yard line with the Hillers to take on first and 10. Keller under center. And it's a quick little handoff to Will Abbott, and he's slowed down and then hit pretty well by a few of the Hiller, I mean, a few of the Wildcat defenders, but he keeps going for a pickup of about nine yards done. Yeah, uh, Will made a nice cut up there, and I don't didn't see the number of the Milton player, but he did a nice job diving just to slow Will down just a little bit to, for the rest of the players to come and get him, or else Will could have turned that into even more of a game. So the clock running, almost a minute gone in the second quarter. You could do almost anything here, Don. You could stay tight here and then try the long one. But they go for the first down, and Ebert's going to get it. It's a nice gets, push. Yeah, he gets out to about the 48-yard 40, line. Yeah, nice push. Um, again, you got Cavallo there. You got Power 74. You got Stuckel 55. That was a nice push by the O-line to get that first down. You know, they rotate a lot. Of, I see different numbers in different places on the uh, Milton. Looks like they kind of they rotating some guys in a little bit. Or they certainly got enough kids on that sideline to be bringing you know some fresh bodies in there. But it's it's not warm out, so you know you almost you know the thing is you, you want to keep kids involved. If they're going to play, you want to get them involved early, or they'll stand there and turn into a stone. Yeah, no, I hear you. Quick pitch to Abbott going right, and he cuts it up, and he's met, but he's still going, and he's going to get a – I'm saying he's got the first down, Don. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's got it. Yeah, Will, Will made it you – know, took that jet sweep, turned it up quick, and, um, you know, he, he got hit pretty hard. It was a good tackle, but, you know, Will got the better there by keep staying low and keeping his feet moving. Yeah, so they're uh, really grinding it out. They saw something – that they could do, uh, this is where, if you think your speed is neutralized a little bit, this is where you can do the damage. Sure. And they've shown that they can't, they don't do it a lot as far as running in between the tackles, but they have done it, and it looks like they're trying to do it effectively tonight, and they are. Well, they, they don't have a lot of yards rushing no. overall. Mm -mm. And a quick pitch to Ebert out to the outside, and he gets the outside, but... Uh, I'll tell you what I saw. I saw a hold by Linquist, uh, by Abbott. It was it, Abbott. Yeah, but it didn't get called, so nope. it, it never happened. Nope. First down. Nice run by uh, Ebert. Deloya throwing a block out there also. But, yeah, I, I thought Abbott he either threw a heck of a block or it was, uh, or it was a <laughs> It was uh, a bit of a hug. <laughs> but uh, Hebert got the edge, and he got the first down. Deloya made a nice block downfield, and here we are. We're in, uh, inside the 30-yard line. So first down and 10 at the 26, 8.36 to go. On the center. And a quick handoff to Abbott, and he bounces it outside, and he gets not does not get the corner, but he picks up about three, maybe four in the play. Now they're either going with, uh, with Hebert in between the tackles or uh, Abbott on the jet sweep. They're kind of mixing it up here, and we have not seen a pass in a while from this team. No, but, you know, it was right around this spot. They did it last time, so let's uh, – maybe you'll see one now. I think, you know, we, we talked about the, the you know, the, the quick passing and the Linquist settling in there in the zone. That's worked. Also, that out pass, that mm -hmm. out pattern um, has worked. You got Deloya one-on-one out here. I might take a shot there. And Ebert up the middle, and he breaks one, but he comes sideways, and he stopped before the first down. It's going to be about third and two. Nice run up the middle. Good blocking by the line. Um, you got to think here, Rick, that you're going to be in two-down territory. I don't think they'll be kicking a field goal from this spot, but they're not going to punt either. So when Sully's sitting there game planning, he got to figure he's got two shots at this. So it's third and three from the 19-yard line. And he's on the center. Abbott in motion goes out and sets. And it's a quick pitch out to Ebert. And he doesn't get, oh, he does get the corner. Nice break of a tackle 
and he cuts it back in. He gets the first down. McDonald made a nice cut block on the outside there to, to spring um, Connor, and uh, they had that covered, Rick, but then Connor made a nice cut back and got the first down. This is a nice time-consuming drive, um, you know, kind of setting the setting the tone. The offensive line's taking control here, so I love this. So it's about the 13-yard line, first and 10. And it's just going to stay in that formation in, until they can stop it. Abbott comes left. He doesn't get much. He gets to about the 11. Picks up one or two. A pitch that that pitch. You know they're going to let him stop it, right? I mean, keep going to the well until they say you know no more, no yeah, mas. I, I, I will. How many carries does he have already? Uh, 10, a few. Twelve. I mean, I'll <laughs> pitch you the Hillers are over 75 yards rushing. Already, 70 as a team? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, they're probably over 100. Yeah, the two probably. Drives. Yeah, probably. So back in the shotgun, Cooney to the – well, we got – they should call timeout because they may have too many uh, – Yeah, they, yep. right? an illegal formation. Yeah, too many men on the field. That's a – to me, that's a coaching issue right there. If you don't know, call a timeout. Yeah, that looked like it was something a formation out of like the Canadian Football League well, or something. Well, he was either he was either offsides or it was too many men on the field. Offsides. He didn't get off the field. That's why he had needed to call timeout. All right, let's just drive this in. There's no reason to pass here. There, no, you know, no. I mean, just keep 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 driving it. Take you know, take the will right out of them. Oh, so he must not have picked up. Too many yards, so they're taking the penalty and keep the down. Second and about three from the, call it the eight, six. So they can get a first down at about the three-yard line. And he hands off to Ebert. He slides, slides, and then is met somewhere near the line of scrimmage. And it's right around the line of scrimmage, so it's going to bring up third. Third and about three, I will call it no gain. Well, maybe a little bit of a loss. Milton's defensive line had good pressure there. Number 10 kind of altered the play. He, uh, as soon as Connor got the ball, he was kind of in his face. Connor had to do a jump step to the right, and uh, there was nothing there either. So he was lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. So you get third and, third and a long three, we'll call it. Again, Rick, you know, I, you could kick a field goal here, but uh, you got to think you got two downs to get this thing. Well, I'm thinking, you know, with the ability for Milton to score, you probably have a – and Abbott cuts to the – he's going to get a touchdown. He, a quick fake to Ebert, and Abbott came back along the, the line of scrimmage and handed off to him and cut it up the middle for a touchdown. I'm liking this little misdirection thing they got going here. They got guys going this way. You got Deloy in the background. You got Abbott going one way. Hebert, I don't know. Who knows who's got the ball. But when <laughs> Abbott gets uh, gets in his hands, he's quick with it. Made a nice cut. Excellent blocking on the edge there. Sealed the linebacker. Nice alley for Abbott to go right up. Touchdown. And that brings it 13-7. to seven. Hillers. With Backley Uker for the extra point. The snap is good. It's blocked and no good. Somebody got in there. It looks like number 34 maybe. Number th we'll give it to number 34. Yeah, it was hard to see. It was slow developing. It was a slow developing snap, hold. Everything looked like slow on Hopkinton's part, and it looked like uh, Milton had a good jump on it. And that was just not not that was not a good play right from the start. So hopefully that doesn't come back at haunt us, and uh, let's keep the momentum going here. Yeah, we're gonna give that block to number 34, Ryan Hoey, but I I don't exactly know who it was. I'm not, was it blocked? I yeah, I know sure. he blocked. What, he, they, blocked? Somebody, somebody got it. Okay. Okay, so it's right. not getting any warmer out. I, I, you know, I feel bad. I see some friends out there freezing. We're in here. It's kind of nice in here, actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, guys. Yeah, well, That's you know, too bad. <laughs> Thanksgiving will be in here too, so I don't oh, know what yeah. kind of weather we'll have then. Uh, hopefully, it's freezing. <laughs> Brendan Kelly with the kick. It's a oh, oh, oh right. 40. 
Number 40, Crowley oh, 40. overruns it. Oh, and number 17, Woodley. Oh, he ball, fumbles ball. the ball! And the Hillers recover the ball at the 11 yard line. Although nobody's uh, nobody's yeah, saying nobody said it. it looks like I can't I can't believe it's not ours. It's got to be. Nobody's nobody's yelling and screaming yet, so I don't know what's going on. Nobody's <laughs> still I, nothing. I am not sure. Yeah, we got the Hiller ball at the 11 yard play. line. That's a huge play. Who's got that? 24 Brown. Nice. Uh, that, you know, Rick, I don't know what – that was a disaster from the get-go for Milton. Obviously, this is a strategy from Hopkins then to kind of squib kick it, right? You're yeah. keeping it away from uh, from Smith. And, you know, kicked it number 40. He doesn't look like he handles the ball too well or very often. He let it bounce around there. you got to fall on that thing, for gosh sakes. And then 17 got it, and he was hit immediately by Farina. And um, there you go. So now now we're in business again, baby. Let's go. Yeah, 40 Crowley, uh, it was bouncing. It was a tough ball to get to. It went over his shoulder, and Woodley came up to get it. Fall on it, for goodness well, sake. Well, he, he had it. I mean, you know, he just started to run backwards and get it knocked out of his hands. So the Abbott handoff, he changes direction and comes back and loses a bout. I don't know if he did that by design, Don, or it didn't look like he was forced to come back. He just turned and came back. I don't know, Rick. I'm, I'm glad you're doing play-by-play -play, because I'm not sure who has the ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was Avid who had the ball. Okay. <laughs> but he, he had the, almost a jet sweep going right, and he just peeled off and came back. Now, I don't know if anybody forced him to come back, but I think he might have been trying something. They had some penetration on the defensive line that was you know, creating problems right from the get-go on that play. Yeah, oftentimes if you're chasing, you come too flat. And that would work, but the you know the penetration was right in line with where he came back. Right. So it's second and about 13. Kelleher rolls to his right, rolls to his right. He's got pressure and he's going down. He sacked at about the 26-yard line. That was uh, interesting play. He obviously didn't see him because he just looked like well, he was he looking downfield. Done. Yeah, he was looking downfield, and uh, Caputo kind of came from the. From 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 behind, Ryan. Um, you know that's the first time. Well, we saw Ryan roll out on the touchdown pass, which he has done a lot. He's rolled out all year. You know, one thing I'm looking I'm looking for. Where's 21? Where's Zach Frank? Do we have? Is he's not? I injured, haven't seen he? anything that would say he's not around. Um, um, I looked at. I didn't. Oh, Zach Frank out. Injury report. No, I didn't see it. Darn. Yeah, it's right there. And they missed him there, Rick. Yeah, uh, yeah you know, know he, they right. rolled out. Frank would ordinarily pick up that linebacker coming in there, and uh, and he didn't. He wasn't there, and uh, that's a big sack by Milton right there. Yeah, so that's third and 25. A long ways to go from the 26-yard line, roughly. And Kelleher back to pass. He's looking downfield. He's looking. He throws. He got hit. And Abbott was wide open with three guys around him. I'm not exactly sure what happened there. But Kelleher got hit as he threw a wobbly pass. You almost thought it might have been picked, but he was right there all by himself. Yeah, I'm not sure how you let Will Abbott just be standing in the middle of the field uh, all alone. 22 um, yards down the field, Don. Not yeah, just, you know, uh, in the middle of the field. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't understand that from a defensive perspective. But, you know, Kelleher did a nice job. Stood in there. They had max protection, so you had Hebert in there helping him block, too. Um, he had plenty of time. He waited, 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 hopped, 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 hopped held it to the last possible second threw it kind of a duck well he got, got hit there. as he, he got right. hit as he threw it that was the issue right he got there he got there uh quick but uh abbott made a good throw here's fourth down rick yeah. that's not a first down. fourth and one from the four yard line they can get a first down but they didn't without scoring he's on the center I uh, he ebert i think he's got it i'm pretty sure they're looking down by the goal line so he got at least three yards on that play yeah, it looked like a first down from this side. Yeah, he, I can see what the official is. He's inside the one. Okay, there we go. Okay, good. Boy, that's a big play right there. Kelleher to Abbott again. Well, These his, two guys, they, his, they his, are the most prolific. His, oh, they have to right? be. Yeah. They have to be. Um, but the interesting thing oh, yeah, here is that. goal line here, baby. It's, uh, it took up a lot of time, Donnie. They get the ball when it was about 440 to go, and it's down to 143. So it's played out to their favor. And Hopkinton gets the ball in the second half. Sure. And that's uh, a sneak, and he's in for the touchdown. Kelleher with a one-yard plunge. 
<laughs> to make it 19 to seven. Gonna uh, likely go for two points. I would here, think right? they'd go for two to try to get that that back. Boy, oh boy. What a nice, you know what, you couldn't have asked for a worse start, but you, everything's been. Uh, <laughs> yeah, roses since. <laughs> everything has been uh, candy and roses ever since, Rick. It's, uh, it's good stuff, and you know what? This is a big play right here. We know Milton can score, so, you know, who knows what's going to happen in the second half. 1970s, extra points come into, you know, they'll, they could come into factor. Let, let, hopefully they have a play here that's going to get two points. funny because we have not you know Kelleher has done a great job spreading it around whether it's to Deloya or Cooney or uh, Lindquist it's been an Abbott show here so here we go out of the shotgun he's rolling right rolling right rolling right he had somebody and it's got him caught Abbott Mr. Abbott two-point conversion well yeah Ryan throws the ball well on the run uh, he kind of threw it back across his body there. Will looks like he was going to go for the corner of the end zone, that he kind of just turned and found a spot, and Ryan saw him. Uh, Ryan has good vision on the field, and uh, that's a big two points there for the Hillers. Yeah, that's a little backyard football, all right? Just run around the back of the end zone until, until you open, and I'll get you. Yep, he had the time there. All right, so you got a minute 32. I would expect one of these squib type of kicks <laughs> by, right, the Hillers and – I, if it was me, I'd kick it right back to number 40, you know? Well, Woodley and... Although I'm sure the coach told him, hey, kid, if the ball comes, you just fall. Yeah. Woodley and Charles deep. Brendan Kelly at the 40, getting ready to kick. 21-7, to seven. Hill is 132 to go in the half. You know, Rick, at halftime, we normally will go out and talk to the guys. <laughs> and I think we might, might stay, stay in, in a little bit. Just stay let, here. let them come let to them us. Come to us. <laughs> and this yep, time. Right the number oh, four. Oh, 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 he caught it, there though. He's yeah. coming straight up the middle. That's Crowley coming up the middle to the 35 yard line where he's tackled. Farina wants a little bit more, another fumble. Put a nice <laughs> stick on him. So Crowley went up. Like a receiver to get that ball versus, nice trying to, versus a shortstop type thing and made the catch. And, you know, that was actually going to land in a good spot because I don't think the deep guy was going to get that no. if, if it got over him. Right. No, he made it. That number 40 came back and made a very nice play for his team right there by catching that ball. And then he got it, took it up and got another five, seven yards. So we got a minute 23. You got Milton with probably three timeouts figure. Um, you know, let's let's see what we can do here. It'll be a nice uh, nice stop if we can do this. Okay, so they're uh, in a passing set. They got a running back. Smith Giles to the right of, and it's going to be a. F oh no, it wasn't Smith Giles, and it's a fake, and he's he's he, he stripped. Is it a strip fumble? But it's going to be the Wildcats' ball. He was looking downfield. I don't know if anybody was open, Don. He was looking uh, yeah. downfield. Yeah, I, did, I, I didn't see who – it looked like it was just a little misdirection there, fake, fake, and then he was looking deep. Um, I didn't see who the strip was, uh, stripped them there, but it came from the backside. Yeah, you got to – Could have been Hebert. Got to step been. up into that pocket, right? That's If it's clean like that, step up. McMenon in the shotgun, he's looking downfield. A lot of people in his way, and he one-hops it to Crowley. That was a bad. That was a bad pass. Yeah, he had him open coming across at the around the 44-yard line. He was very, he was very open, and number 40 he already proved that he had pretty good hands when he wants to use them, and uh, that was just a that was just a horrible pass. You know, Rick, I, I if I'm Milton, I'm trying. I, I throw a screen. I'd do something to get the ball in, in uh, Smith's hands, Smith Charles' hands here. Okay, so they got trips to the right. And he's looking downfield. He's looking. He's got. Oh, he had uh, number 16. Smith Charles was out there, and Link Linkwich was turning around a little bit, but it was a poor throw. Yeah. He had the right matchup. If you want to be running, that's the guy to be running with. Right. No, they, uh, you know, they have the right idea trying to get that kid the ball. You know, this quarterback didn't seem to have good pocket presence. He doesn't seem to feel the the pressure around him because he was getting the pressure from the back there, kind of hopping around, and then he just flung it and another kind of a poor pass. Is this Crowley on the kick? I can't see. Is that number 40? Yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah. oh and he's going to he let it drop. 
and he's going to pick it up, and he's hit right away and dropped at the 40-yard line. Talk, tackle by number, I think it was a little guy, number 17, Woodley. Yeah, he was down there quick. Will did not fair catch it, um, fielded it on the bounce, and he was hit immediately, and um, he did a good job on just not losing the ball. Check and, that. That was Moses Malau. So I don't expect um, I don't expect Coach Sully to, and Coach Gerard to kneel on this. Um, 24 seconds left. Um, you know, if I got the athletes that these guys do, I would throw the ball. Throw the ball. Maybe you got, you know, maybe throw something, try and get about 20 yards here, get on the other side of the 50, see what we got. Yeah, they're going to stack to the right. Lindquist in tight. Abbott in motion. Jet sweep handoff to Abbott. And he's caught from behind. Oh, he gets out of it. But he's still right around the line of scrimmage. So that brings us to 15 seconds. My guess is they might just let this run, or they're going to try one deep one maybe. You let it go down and just try one? Yeah, I don't know. It looks like they're going to let it run out. But that was, um, you know, if you watch that play, Rick, you had Hebert there kind of running behind. Yeah, he wasn't quite leading that play the he way it needed to be. He wasn't leading at all, and it makes me think, is they're gonna, are they going to set something up where you almost a little got option. an option there and, and get, it to Hebert on the, get it to Hebert on the outside? No, I'm, I'm guessing know? he was just – just too deep to be able to get in, in front to lead it. So that brings us to the half. The Hillers leading 21 to 7. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back for the second half. She's a good girl. Good luck to the Hiller Cheer Squad who will be competing at regionals this Sunday at Franklin High School. Go Hillers! My name is Kurt. My name is Nina. I'm Gunny. I'm Haley. Hi, hi, Davis. Jake. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Al and Gal and we love HM. Hey, I love to be. Uh, camp. We love, love H -Camp. H camp And I volunteer for H Camp TV. I watch H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. We, we love, love H, -Camp H Camp TV. Woo! All right, Hiller fans, welcome back to the second half where the score is 21 to 7, Hillers. But before we get into the recap of the game, Don, we, we realized that uh, just how cold it was by how many people visited the booth um, <laughs> at halftime. And, and, and we really got to get the, uh, the tip of the hat to our camera folks, John Ritz oh. and Denise Hintaki, up, upstairs in the cold and wind. We got Don Diggs in, down here. He's really uh, coordinating everything up with the cameras and letting us do our talk and that kind of thing. And we got, I'll call it in-studio producer, Mike Tarosian, who's nowhere to be found tonight, but I'm Tarosian's sure he'll do. Everywhere. He'll he's be doing the cutting, uh, yeah, uh, the cutting room uh, later on tonight. But uh, let's get into the recap. We got a 21 to seven uh, score, and we have I have it written down here somewhere. Uh, here it is. In the first quarter, we have a 72 yard run on the first play of the game by Smith Charles to make it seven to nothing. The Hillers had an impressive second drive uh, after they went three and out. They drove uh, 69 yards. Kelleher to Abbott, 22-yard pass. The kick was good, 7-7. Seven to seven. In the second quarter also, 449, a six-yard uh, TD rush from uh, Will Abbott. The kick was no good. That made it 13-7. to seven. And after a fumble on a kickoff with 132 left, a one-yard Kelleher run and a two-point pass to Abbott made it 21-7 to where we are today. A pretty good first half uh, considering. Yeah, it, it's, um, you know, Milton came out with that quick first touchdown and uh, Hopkinton kind of settled, had a big defensive stop, went back and had a nice drive of their own, had another nice drive and then came up with a big turnover down here on the kickoff and then converted to make it 21-7. Declan Driscoll on the kickoff, and it takes a squib, and it's to DeLoya, and he cuts out to the right, and he's going to get tackled around the 30 or run out of bounds at the 33-yard line, 34-yard line of the Hillers. Luke did a nice job grabbing that ball there, and uh, he took it up 
And, uh, you know, Luke is um, uh, did a great job switching hands there as he headed towards the sideline. He had it in his left hand, heading towards the sideline for all you young ball runners, uh, football uh, running backs out there. When you're heading to the sidelines, you put it in the arm that is closest to the sideline. Luke did a great job there. First down, Hillers. So we're going to, you know, it, it's been working, so why not stay with it? This tight running formation with two wings and Ebert straight up the middle. And he picks up about, oh, we'll call it three on the play. You know, coming out um, in a game where it's, it's this cold, and again, Rick, it, it's, it's as advertised out there. It is freezing, <laughs> and it's windy. And, you know, the kids that are playing, that's one thing. They stay loose, but these boys standing on the sidelines, that's why it's tough if somebody goes down or you have to come in there on a whim, and you're standing there, and you, you can't move. Your legs are ice. You're... You know, so hopefully uh, everyone stays on the field here. We need to get any subs. So Kelleher, Ebert in motion. Jet sweep to Ebert, and he gets the corner, and he turns it up, and he's still loose. And he gets to about the 47-yard line for a first down. Now they have Ebert running on jet sweep. Uh, he took it up, had nice blocking on the edge, took it up, made a nice, it was that the good 15 yard run. But I, I will say, Rick, it was something we should watch. If Kelleher fakes that and keeps that ball, that was wide open over here. You had one guy, you had DeLoya blocking one guy. Kelleher could have taken that for a huge gain. Watch that for later. So we might, we might see that. He might do it on his own, too, if he sees oh, absolutely. it when he's, when he's turning. Absolutely. He's a smart kid, heads up kid. He could definitely do that on his own. Same formation, tight. Will Abbott, jet sweep out. He bellies out, and he's going to get not caught. He runs into his own guy, but he gets back to about the original line of scrimmage. Well, there was good uh, good penetration there by number 32 um, on Milton. Lindquist was trying to get a body on him, wasn't able to. He disrupted the play. Uh, Abbott tried to cut back, but there was really nothing there. Good pursuit. So it brings up second and 10 from the 48-yard line. One of the things they have, oh, we played in some pretty cold games as youths, and uh, they got these these um, gas heaters that they're using. And Milton has the tent. You see a lot of kids over there around the tent. Yeah, we would just kind of do jumping jacks back then. <laughs> Ebert straight up the middle, and he's, he's bottled up for about a gain of one, gets it out to about the 49, brings up about a third and nine. Kind of goes along with what the weather is here, Rick, um, but this is the least amount that I have seen the Hillers not, you know, th run, is throwing the ball. We usually throw the ball a lot more than this. Um, uh, you know, we don't have the stats in front of us as far as how many carries both Hebert and uh, Abbott have. And obviously this is a, you know, with Zach Frank out, who usually gets a couple carries a game. Right. Um, I think you're going to see, uh, you know, Hebert getting, the, I mean, uh, Abbott even getting more, and it wouldn't surprise me to see Deloya get some carries out of the jet or something here. So it brings up third and nine from the 49, Kelleher in the shotgun. Three receivers to the right. And, and he's going to throw deep down the field, and he right through the hands of Abbott, but it was kind of he was releasing from the coverage of number uh, uh, Jameer. I can't see his name. Jameer Woods was on the co cover, and he just uh, wasn't able to separate enough. It was well covered. He had two guys on him. That was a, a you know, it wasn't the prettiest throw by Ryan. It was kind of fluttering a little bit. Um, Will is such a great athlete. He almost turned his body enough to make that catch. He just got his hands up just too late, and uh, it, right. was, it was just incomplete. But the, nice effort. Kelly gets the punt. Eddie Hassel, I just looked into the light, and I can't see a thing right now. And he oh, fumbles oh. the ball. And got he got it. it back, though. Hassel fumbled it but got it back. So that's a uh, little start at around the 24-yard line. You know, <laughs> in, in, in playoff games, tight games like this, you cannot be putting the ball on the ground, and that's, that seems to be what Milton's doing, at least on their special teams. And, um, you know, they were lucky that the Hillers were not able to capitalize there. Yep, so after the short drive by the Hillers, 7.56 in the, in the uh, third quarter, your little queen going out there. Oh I can, yeah. I can I feel the that. crowd getting into it. Luke McMen McMenamin in the in the shotgun. He's got uh, three receivers to the right. He's got nobody in the backfield with him. Two to the left. 
And he's just going to be a quick throw. And he was looking. He's going to run. He's going to run. You know, he's going to run, but he's not going to get anywhere. He's taken out at around the 21-yard line for a loss. Yeah, it looked like he had time there to make something happen, but uh, I, I thought he was going to dump it to 13. It was kind of dragging across the middle. If he would have got it to him, they could have had something, but he didn't held on to it. And then you had Cousins and uh, I think uh, McDonald, 52, kind of trailing from behind there. So that's second and, second and long. Yeah, second and about 11. Lost one on the play. It's at the 22-yard line. He's not as fleet as foot of it as his uh, receivers and running back for sure. McManaman in the shotgun with Smith Charles now shifting to his left. And it's a handoff to Smith Charles and he cuts it up into the middle and he gets about two on the play. Hillers have, are, are doing, you know, they've kind of got their feet under under them, like I had said earlier with this defense. Um, they've done a great job all year pursuing to the ball. They get a lot of uh, helmets to the ball, and um, I, I, I think that they, uh, they're they handling this Milton offense right now. Yeah, so, Don, you know, we can talk about this as the game goes on, but uh, so the winner of this game plays in the Division Four, I guess, Eastern Mass mm -hmm. uh, finals, which would be next week. The North. Yeah, north versus south. But the Central is the only team left out of the Central and West. They have a bye that would end up going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, they're, they're, the winner of that is going to the Super Bowl. There's holding on Brown. It is uh, a short pass, but it's not going to It's not gonna do anything. It's going to be fourth and about, you know, seven on the play. Yeah, Brown was being held there um, by the left tackle. You know, I, I can't, I'm can't. i surprised they didn't throw that. But nevertheless, uh, it's another turnover, another three and out for the Hiller defense and um, that's a nice that's a very nice turn of events for the Hillers absolutely looks like we're gonna have pretty good field position here Rick like to see Will Field this boy you know if he could get a punt on the run yeah yeah you know, I mean geez you know maybe that's the theory that's why he's so deep but he's letting too many of them fall and this one here is gonna mm -hmm. fall Ooh, I thought he could have got that one as well it like looked like he could have had that one on the run no yeah well, he just needs to move up and catch it on the fly. Right. I mean, he was. It only landed, you know, five yards from him, so he yeah. could have come up and got that. Uh, and, you know, I can see he gets frustrated with himself because he's, you know, he's so competitive. He's. I can see he gets disappointed there. But um, well, he, what happens is he looks up and sees what was there, and it's like, right, ah, right, know. right. I would grab that. I, mean, I, I could. Have, I had ten yards before anybody even touches me. Right. Okay, so Hiller's uh, in possession here. They. Um, didn't do anything with the first possession. Let's see if they can put together a drive here and kind of put this game away. All right, so there. Time's already. We're already at 6'10". Six, yeah, 6'10 six, of the third quarter. As the clock will become their friend at some point, and it's a fake pitch, and Kelleher comes out to the left, but he's met pretty quickly. Had some open room, but the safety came up number three. Number three. Number three being uh, Mikel Lafleur on the tackle came up from the safety spot, closed it down pretty quick. Yeah, it looked like Kelleher might have had a, uh, some space there, but um, number three was quick uh, to pursue, and uh, Ryan was you know lucky to even get two yards there. So it brings up second and eight from the 32-yard line, and the Hillers, uh, you know, we talked about that a little bit. They'll fake and let Kelleher do his thing. That was it. Uh, Ebert in motion, and he's going to take the jet sweep to the left, and he's going to get the corner, and he gets a little bit of the corner. He picks up. He's in bounds. Picks up about three on the play maybe. Makes it third and about five. That was good that he, yeah, he did stay in bounds, so the clock's still running. That's good. And, and, Rick, I think the clock is already their friend. When you got a two-touchdown lead in the second half, you're – the clock is your friend. You can call him clock. You can call him clocky. He'll go by anything. But he's definitely your friend. So just, uh, just you know, keep take your time. Are you starting to lead into another Thanksgiving Day story or something? What's going on here, Don? I'm saving that for, for Turkey Day. Right? But um, you, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, you know, you don't, not in any hurry here. Let the 25-second play clock run down. We're taking our time. We're running the ball. You know, we're already four, four minutes left in the third quarter. 
And he's got a stack formation to the right, and he's just rolling to throw, rolling to throw, rolling to throw. He's looking, he's gonna, he got the first down. He knew where it was. He picked up the first down at the, oh, actually, he didn't get the, sp yeah, he did. He crossed the 40 yard line. That'll yeah. be a first down. I'll tell you what, that was all spit and vinegar there by, uh, by Kelleher because, <laughs> oh, wait. What no, he's a first down. He's just saying first down. Is he on the, did he go back on the huddle? Who? Oh, there he is. Yeah, he's okay. right here. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, you know what? He could have very easily ran out of bounds. Um, they talk about quarterbacks being pretty boys, and that's what they used to call you back in the day. Well, you know. But, but uh, you know, Kelleher put his, put his shoulder down there, and he got that first down. I mean, uh, he was going to be short, but he really fought for that first down. <laughs> Don, I ran the wishbone offense. I, throw, I threw an entire season what they do in a game today. <laughs> So here we go in the shotgun, Kelleher to Ebert, straight up the middle, nice hole, and he picks up about five on the play, gets it out to the 47-yard line. Kelleher's had some nice blocking up front. McDonald seems to be playing really well from his right tackle position there. Um, he looked like he had his guy a couple yards downfield. Looks like Hebert reads that block and kind of cuts right off of it. That's, uh, that was a nice gain, certainly on first down, anytime you can get six yards. Yeah, he didn't get touched until the second level, so you're right, the blocking spectacular up front. You know, another thing that goes unnoticed is Cavallo's done a heck of a job snapping the ball. Uh, like, and you know, Ebert and squeezes shotgun. out to the right side. Nice little shuffle step. And he goes out of bounds around the 40-yard line of Milton. Okay, so they are trying to uh, establish, not even trying, they have established the line of scrimmage. Um, the big uglies up front are trying to do, they're doing their job and they're imposing their will here. And, um, you know, Will, or Connor went out of bounds there to stop the clock at 302, but... You know, just a nice drive here. No throw in the ball, no nothing, just just right down the field. Yeah, and this is, um, you know, you wouldn't think that it, with the speed that the match, they wouldn't be getting to the outside as well. But now they just got the line of scrimmage. Hebert cuts it up the middle, cuts it back in. He's down around the 15-yard line. Nice run by Connor Ebert. Yeah, they're pounding that right side of the line. Again, McDonald, uh, number 59, Butello. Um, looks like the right guard. You got Cavallo the center. Um, Abbott's been throwing some nice blocks downfield. Um, Lindquist is always right there in the middle throwing his weight around. Um, you know, you kind of see, you know, Milton, as they lose gas, their shoulders kind of dip a little bit, and uh, they're moving a little slower, and Hillers are really taking it to them right here. Yeah, you punch in this ball with the, the length of this drive. That's almost a nail in the coffin. Ebert straight up the middle, and he gets nothing. He's penetration by number 34, Ryan Hoey on the tackle. That looked like a run blitz from the corner. He came in from his outside linebacker spot and just came down the line, and, and Connor had no shot there. He was lucky to hang on to the ball. So that brings up, uh, we'll call it one yard on the play, second and nine from the 15-yard line. Kelleher in the shotgun. Oh, over his sh ball over his head, and he's got a lot of. Oh, he just went down. Pretty smart play. He had a lot of white jerseys around him. That wasn't going to end well. And here I go, Rick. As soon as I say yeah, yeah, right, as soon as right. I say somebody's right. doing something good, next thing you know, yeah. <laughs> that that actually that was a high snap, but I think Ryan, you know, could have handled it, but he didn't. But he did a great job recovering and uh, you know stopping the bleeding there on that play. Well, we've been down this road before with a, a third and long. And oh, yeah. Picked up 22 yards. So let's see if they can uh, recapture the magic on this particular play. Well, the other thing you want to look at here, Rick, I mean, they're at the 24-yard line. Uh, yeah, you know, if you get eight or nine yards, you could put yourself in a position for a field goal, which would come in huge here up by two touchdowns already. You can get, make it a three-score game. That's huge. Yes, you could. So out of the shotgun, third and about 18. Kelleher back to pass, looks right, throws right, and Abbott's, oh! Ooh. What, the, was that defended? I'm not sure what happened there. It looked like Will was gonna be, it, it looked like he was open, and I think that 17 got his hand up. The, the ball might have been behind him somehow. Yeah, it was, it, it, I think he might have tipped it and went behind him. Well, um, he might have been out of bounds. Did he uh, go out of bounds? The, the official has his hat off as if somebody went out of bounds. This official's telling us here, yeah, he had the. 
So it's uh, I'm not sure it would have been a legal catch if that happened or the defender was out of who knows. But yeah. uh, it doesn't matter. It fell incomplete. It's fourth and 18 from the 24-yard line. They can get a first down at about the about the five-yard line, six-yard line. So they don't have to get into the end zone, but they need a chunk of change here, John. Gone. Yeah, did I say John? Yeah, that's yeah, okay. John, well, you, you, you know what it's you cold. Are, it's cold. You're worried about John. Yeah. Poor right. John's yeah, up hi, on the top. John Ritz up there I mean, freezing. <laughs> Denise up there freezing. I'm worried about them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I thought it was the bad weather. Remember we did that game last year? It was against uh, Norton, the one that was oh, the rainy. halfway. You know, they uh, had to call the game halfway through. lightning through. and stuff. And yeah. Ritz is up there by himself. Well, he had fun that game. He likes that stuff. He loves that stuff. You know, at least that wasn't – I don't think that was real cold. This is just this is a brutal wind up there with this cold, and it's not uh, – we're not used to it yet. You know, 75 last Friday, and this is what we have this Friday. Yeah, I think the older we get, we're not. I, I, I'm, I'm, whoa, getting, whoa, whoa. I'm getting, getting old. What? I'm what? getting less tolerant of the cold weather the older I get. Um, I used to be able to take it, but now I. Uh, well, you just got to dress for like, it now. I don't like it very much. Yeah, but then it makes me look fat. You know, oh, the more layers wait, I put on, you know, it makes me look fat. There's so. more you to love, Don. That's all. That's all. That's how we'll address that. <laughs> That's okay. How about these officials out here? I think they're calling a pretty good game. It's, it's yeah. cold out there. They're moving and they're well, doing their thing. It looks like they're having some fun. I guarantee that they're not going to throw the flag <laughs> to slow anything down. <laughs> you know, they're as cold as anybody. Yeah, there won't be a lot of conversations tonight about this, that, yeah. and the other thing. Mm -mm. So fourth down here, fourth and 18. You know, um, you want to be careful with the ball. You don't want to have any turnovers or sacks to give them better field, better field position. So let's see what uh, Sullivan came up with here. So Kelleher is back to pass. He's looking in the middle of the field. He's got, oh, you know, that was a smart play. He was going for DeLoyer and Crowley. I, I think he's mad at himself for not intercepting, but that was the best thing that could have happened to him. It, it, it probably was, yeah, because he, if he would have caught it, he might have gotten some yardage, but he wouldn't have got back to where they had the ball there. So it was probably best that it bounced off of his hands. And, um, you know, if Milton's going to do something here, now's a good time for them to, to start. Well, it's only 44 seconds left in the third quarter, and it, uh, they better get going because they're not going to have too many possessions left. No. And, and what, you know, the, what, what did we have? It was that Medfield game. We were not there when the Hillers had a 14 nothing lead and going in late, I believe. Yeah, in the fourth quarter, the last six minutes of that game, I guess, turned out pretty ugly. Yeah, and so, you know, high school football, you never know what's going to happen. So we um, got to keep the – Keep the thumb on them here and shut them down. Crowley and Hassel to the left, and he's looking, he's looking, he's looking, and McMinnon throws across the middle, and he catches it, number eight. Nice hit by uh, Ionelli, the eights. The great eights hit together. Ionelli comes up and tackles Jameer Woods as he comes across the middle, but they pick up a first down. <laughs> Tell you what, it's men only out there, Rick. <laughs> I mean, this is a... Even at this high school level, you know, it, it is just a, it can it can be a very brutal sport. And Absolutely, that was, that was a heck of a hit by Ianelli. Um, You know, this quarterback he's got happy feet. He likes to bounce a little bit, but he made a nice throw. And um, number eight caught it. You know, got some space, and that was a nice game by Milton. And McMinniman back to pass again. He oh he's 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 drifting, drifting, drifting. He throws and he gets oh he had somebody coming back, but he dropped it. Was number 17, his intended receiver, Isaiah Woodley, had it and dropped it, but there's a flag in the play. Yeah, he did a nice job coming back for the ball, but he let it get in on him. Instead of catching it with his hands, he tried to catch it with his shoulder pads, and that's normally gonna, not going to work. No, no flag in the play. I'm sorry. Second and 10 at the 50. There's, there's a flag down there. He's not oh. forcing anything. Oh, there he is over here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I thought I saw it, but. He looks like he's waving it off. Well, usually they pick up the flag and do a little dipsy do and. Maybe it fell out of his. Uh, I think he's using it as a handkerchief. Yeah, it could have been blowing his nose. Who knows? Okay, Hassel to the left here. Six seconds. This will be the final play of the quarter. And it's a quick pass out to. And he, oh, I thought he dropped again. Woodley's got it, and he cuts back into the middle, and he's going to be short of the first down. He's going to pick up about eight on the play, and he gets tattooed by someone. I think it was. I think it was. Um, uh, Farina. Yeah, number 50. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it looks like coming out of there. Yeah, I think it was Farina who was kind of deep, I thought, deeper than he normally plays, but he certainly recovered quickly and put a nice stick on. So, um, okay, we got a fourth quarter here. Um, Milton is, is not going away quietly. I thought we were going to take the will out of them. 
Um, but that has not happened. So, uh, you know, we got some excitement here. And, you know, I'm looking over here to the left. We've got nervous parents. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, looking over to the right, you got students got jumping students. all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And the Milton band did come back out. We thought they left, but I see them across. That, you know, that's uh, that's impressive. Well, are they playing over No, there? maybe not, but they're out. <laughs> they're back. <laughs> I mean. I, they brought their instruments. I, you know, yeah, I want to say they're playing. They might want to do, like, some dancing or do some, like, the, you know, the grambling. You know, they have their band oh, yeah, 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 yeah. moving around there. I, I'd, be, I'd be trying to move around if I was over there. I certainly wouldn't be sitting down, I can tell you that much. All right, so uh, start of the fourth quarter. Milton has crossed into Hopkinton territory. It'll be third and three from the 43-yard line of the Hillers. And so this is uh, the first kind of life that they've shown offensively it since really the is. first quarter. This is the first play of the game almost. Yeah. And, so, and you're looking at two-down territory here. Yeah, right? I'm thinking they gotta they got to do something here with, with, with uh, two plays possibly. McMenamin. Talking to Smith Charles, Crowley in motion. And now he looks over for, he's gonna set. He's got trips to the left now with Hassel to the right by himself. The official just put up his hand. They only got a few seconds. You better call timeout. And it's going to be, a lot of uh, he's gonna, I bet you he's gonna let this go. They're not gonna call. And Smith Charles goes up the middle and gets nothing. He got maybe, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. And Lindquist is the guy hugging him closest, so we'll give him the uh, tackle. It looked like a little chess match they had going on there. Uh, kind of bounced the kid in motion, put him out there, changed the formation a little bit. Quarterback's over there looking at the sidelines. They got the Hiller defensive line jumping around. Um, nah, I don't know what was going on, but it looks like we matched whatever they were trying to pull there. And we didn't really do anything. We just kind of watched them do their thing, and mm -hmm. they – um, I, I'd be surprised if they're going to call a delay a game at any point tonight. They'll let these plays go a little longer. There's no real clock to go by other than the the back judge puts up his hand when you got only 10 seconds left. Big play. And he's going to throw, and he's got him, and it's going to be a first down. Hassel with the catch from McMenamin. It gives him the first down with 10, oh, the first down with 10.08 in the fourth. And they'll get right up to the line and uh, – Call a play. That was a big time. That was a big time throw by the quarterback. Um, yeah, it might have been his best throw yet to date. That's fourth down and four. You know, it's not, I'm not gonna say it's the game, but that's a pretty darn big play in the game. Well, it keeps and, him in the uh, game. Absolutely. Number thirteen made a nice uh, ran a nice route, and that was a big first down. Cooney with the nice tackle there. And back to pass. Nobody in the backfield, and he's gonna. He's in trouble, but. And he goes deep, and he's going to be out of bounds. Caught it, but he's out of bounds. He's, uh, yeah, he's shaking his head. No. The official calls him out of bounds. It looked like it was – I can't see who that number Abbott, is. Abbott was on the coverage. Is that number 13? No. What do you got, number 16? Uh, yeah. Number 16. Oh, that was uh, Smith Childs out of the backfield. Yeah, they, they put Abbott there. Abbott picked him up coming out of the backfield, and that, you know, the quarterback – What's, uh, what was ref? the official just doing? I don't know. There was no penalty on the play. I'm calling something. Oh, maybe he was uh, starting a play clock? I bet you he was starting a play clock. No, it was an incomplete pass. No, no, the... the oh, the... Uh, not the... Yeah, the play, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the play clock, not the clock itself. Um, but uh, yeah, we were lucky that they ran out of field there because that kid caught the ball. He did. He did. Second down. And Causes same formation. Had a little pressure there. It's a quick pass, and he runs backwards, it's, and he, he gets out of it. Woodley gets out of it, and he's down the left sideline, and he goes, it's out around the 10-yard the line, maybe inside the 10. Boy, he came back and scooted around like a few guys on the left on and, and took a, w a wicked hit on the uh, along the sideline. He uh, he made a nice catch, kind of came back for the ball. Um, Farina had him. He, he, he was able to break that tackle. Bring it down the sidelines, ran down the sidelines, and uh, Abbott, who you know you don't really consider a big hitter, put a really nice stick on him outside. Took a poor cameraman or somebody down <laughs> over there. I don't know who it was. We decked that guy, and uh, Milton is inside the Hiller ten yard line here. Yeah, Rick. So There's a lot of football left. First here. and goal from the nine yard line. Wildcats knocking on the door. And he's oh, calling a timeout, Milton. He was trying to get. 
somebody off the line of scrimmage. I don't know if they were illegally formation, but uh, he was trying to get somebody off the line of scrimmage. Well, now's not the time that you want to be calling timeouts if you're a Milton Wildcat. Are they the Wildcats? Yes, they the are. Milton, well, Milton right. Wildcat. Yeah, you're doing all right for yourself Milton. there. <laughs> Milton Wildcat uh, fan. You don't want to be necessarily calling timeouts there, um, trying to get your formation straight when you're down. But, um, you know, I, I guarantee, uh, Rick, that they are they have talked about at the halftime, you know, last time they were up here, they had a three-touchdown lead. That's true. And Hillers came back and won the game. So, you know, I'm sure the coaches uh, drilled that into them at halftime. McMenamin in the shotgun. And he's rolling to his right, rolling, rolling. He's coming back, all the way back to Crowley, and he's down to the – oh, he's got to be right around the goal line, Don. He did not score uh, the touch. He's he, at the, about the one-yard line or inside the one-yard line. Very, very uh, – that was a very uh, well-scripted play by Milton there. Um, Forty was wide open. Caught it, and I didn't see who came over yeah, it was quickly. probably DeLoya. He's, he's on that corner out there. I bet you it was DeLoya that came across. Uh, okay, he made a nice tackle to, you know, to stop the touchdown, and uh, which is big here because, you know, makes him run another play. And he's not going to get in. Charles Smith is not going to – oh, he's still – jeez. He, 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 he finally got a touchdown. That was a heck of a run with a lot of assistance going on, huh? Smith Charles got into the end zone. It was a one yard run. Yeah, they, you know, I, I don't know at one point you you blow the whistle. <laughs> they were you know, going, I mean, when forward progress is stopped, I, I would think you blow the whistle, but they didn't. And the kid uh, kept his feet moving and kind of got a little help from his offensive line. And uh, okay, here we go. This is a big extra point here. Absolutely, a we big got extra number forty six here. It looks like number 46 on the kick. It would be uh, Max Winkler or maybe Henry Winkler. I don't know. Little, Fonz. Little Fonzie. Oh, block. And it's picked up, That's but huge. goes nowhere. So that block kick. I think that was, I, I think I, it was, maybe? I don't know. I, I'm a, I don't know. McDonald? I don't know. He came <laughs> in there. I mean, they're hugging Ionelli, so maybe it is Ionelli. But, I mean, he came off the corner, uh, you know, quick. And um, the kicker had no chance, and that's a that's a very 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 big play by the Hillers special teams to keep them up now and going to force uh, if uh, if Milton scores, they're going to force him to get two points. So it's a big play. Yes, it is. So uh, at 8:35 of the fourth quarter, the block kick. We come up field. It's 21-13 Hillers. The Wildcats. A pretty impressive drive. Almost, uh, they started at the 28-yard line. It was a pretty impressive drive, Don. It was, you know, and it's, you know, Rick, I don't know. I mean, I know, you know, you talk to some folks, especially parents, they, they want to blow out and they don't want to worry because, you know, we've been in that spot, Rick. We sure. know what it's like to be a parent sitting yep, there and yep, worried. Yep. And, and, you know, the blowouts are nice. But as somebody watching here, you know, we want the Hillers to win. But I, I'm enjoying just having a, a competitive game here. This is exciting. Yeah, we haven't had many competitive games no, we er early not. in the year. Uh, certainly in the playoffs, um, we have Playoffs, we have not. But certainly uh, we tonight. Not. Actually, the only the most competitive, the only competitive game I've seen has been Hollison. Hollison, 12-8. And that's a, a, a not even a squibby. He picked it up, and it's Brown. Comes to the outside. He's going to get the corner. Oh, he stumbles, and he gets to about the 42-yard line. Nice run. There we go. Brown's uh, he's an outside linebacker, and he's trying to audition here for running back. <laughs> he's going to tell Coach Sullivan, Coach Gerard, hey, give me a shot with the ball. And uh, he made the most of it and got some positive yards there, Rick. Yeah, if he didn't stumble, he, he might have been able to get the corner. I don't, you know, I don't know if he takes it to the house, but he certainly uh, – Probably gets across the 50 and, and does some damage on the other side of the field. Yeah, I'm not going to give him the house, but I would have given him another four or five yards. But uh, I think he would have gotten caught. So that uh, kick didn't actually hit the ground. That's what they're trying to do. He actually caught it in the air. So uh, Kelleher gets under center. This is by far uh, the most snaps ever under center in any particular game from the Hillers. And it's a quick pitch to Ebert. He's going for the left corner, and he gets it. He cuts it up, and he picks up about eight yards, maybe nine on the play. Yeah, Connor made a nice, did a nice job cutting up field there, not only to get the yards, but again, you know, Hillers don't want to be going out of bounds here. No, um, no, not with 8-10 left in the fourth no. quarter and up by a score. No, I mean, and if they do what they can do here, um, you know, they should be able to run some time off. Now, Milton's going to have to start selling out on the run here. Uh, you know, they can't just sit here and accept four, five, six-yard gains. 
Um, they are going to have to sell out and try and do a run blitz and try and get a negative play to make the Hillers throw the ball. And it's straight up the middle to Ebert, and he picks up the first down. So that was a, just a straight-ahead run designed to get the first down. Ebert, a tough one inside. Yeah, again, Ricky, you know, you, really the only chance you have here is to create a negative play. You know, you, if you put a high school offense in a situation where they have to, you know, they lose yards on first down or second down. Any offense. <laughs> really any any offense, um, but especially, at, you know, at the high school sure. level. I understand. Uh, so, you know, here, you know, I'd be doing some sort of run blitz or something to disrupt this Hiller running game. So Abbott in motion comes, looks like he's going to set in the slot. And it's a quick pitch out to Ebert. He cuts and he gets nothing. He's met by number eight, Woods, on the tackle. Came up from his safety spot and hit him and nothing else. Number 67 doesn't look like a very big kid, but he looks like he slanted in from either his defensive line position or actually now I'm looking at it might come from the backside linebacker. But he disrupted that play there kind of made Connor hesitate and then there was you know really no room for Connor to run and um, they were lucky not to lose yardage yeah there. he got back to the line of scrimmage so the clock is running 636 to go and we'll take all day in the huddle oh yeah now yeah. unless the back judge has been kind of warning people whatnot he I, I guess he could call a penalty down late in the game just to keep the you know the clock honest Kelleher is going to He's got. Oh, he got. He got smoked. Who came in there? Number ten. Wow. Number ten. Is that Bar uh, Isaiah Lynch? Absolutely tattooed. Kelleher, as he was looking, might have been looking for Linquist down the left sideline. I'm not sure. I didn't really. I didn't really peel off to see who was open in the pattern. That was a very. I like the play call, Rick. I, I really do. A play action pass there. I like that. Uh, try and you know really throw a bomb right there. I like that. Milton did a great job. Number ten. Boy, he he was in there quick and he laid a hit on Kelleher. Ryan did a great job just hanging on to that ball. Okay, so the clock's still running on the sack. 5:34 to go, yeah, but it's a third and about 20. Nothing dumb here, guys, and stay in bounds. So Ebert comes in motion. It's a fake quick pitch to Abbott, and it's sniffed out. He's going to lose about one on the play by Crowley makes the tackle. Well, football is a game <laughs> of um, it's a game of momentum, and right now the team in the white and the red seem to have a little jump in their step. Rip, Rick. Yeah. They, uh, you know, we we try we talked about keeping the thumb on them and taking the life out of them, and and we haven't been able to do that. And and to their credit, you know, they got the, they're getting the ball back here with 4:50 left. Yeah, so that's the point I said when we were down around the 10 yard line. I said if we put the uh, score here, we got the nail in the coffin. It's been just the opposite. And Hassels feels the punch, drops it. Oh. And Milton covers up the ball, but Hassel dropped the ball. And who was on the, was it number 13? Who was on the? Uh, I don't know, you got number 13. I you think got that was nine. Zach Fisher. might have been close to it. Fisher, you got number nine. That's uh, Karen Kerr. Karen Kerr. Karen Her. Um, you got 74 down there. Powers looked like he was down there trying to jump on it. Um, I've never, I have not seen a team that's been they struggled uh, off uh, <laughs> special teams punts. wise. They, I they, mean, they, goodness they, gracious! They've dropped uh, a kickoff, a couple of punts, and it's not helping their cause for sure. So with 4:39 to go, the Wildcats will start from about the 12-yard line, and they got a big hill to climb, but they have enough speed to get chunks of yard done. Yeah, yeah, you want to make sure you keep 17 bottled up here, or 16 16, and they just did. Brown just caught him, and he's down for a loss, a big loss. That was Brown came in from the uh, light linebacker side. It was excellent penetration by Brown and the rest of the Hiller uh, defensive line there. Brown just beat his uh, beat that center right off the ball. Um, I, I, I would it be must thinking. Have run, must have run backwards, though, and he lost 10 yards in the play. Yeah, he did. He, he did. He um, did. I, I, I would be yards. looking at getting a screen or something. Get this. Get, uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be running the ball there. I can tell you that much. So I can, the, the fans staying warm, pounding the, the stands. 
And he's, it, here's that screen, oh, and here yeah. it comes, and he's got a lot of room. And he fumbled the ball out of bounds, but Avid came all the way across the field, and it's going to be close to a first down, but he had to – no, it's not going to be close to a first no. down. He got out around the around a 19-yard line. Yeah. And, um, and it's know. in the bounce, too, so the clock's still running. He fumbled it out of bounds after it hit the ground. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a heck of a play by Will. He came, he really closed on that ball quick because 16 had some running room there, Smith, and uh, and Will did a great job, made a nice tackle. So now it's a little more manageable. Third and about five, and he's got number eight, and that's uh, that's Woodley. Uh, Jamie L. Wood, sorry, on the catch, and he's got the first down. And he gets out of bounds to stop the clock with 3.11 to go. That's been one of their most reliable plays, Rick, is just that little turnaround by number eight. Um, I don't know if we're playing off of him or giving him a little bit too much space, but he's kind of running uh, our cornerbacks off and then just turning around, and he's, he's been wide open. All right, so we'll set it at a first down and around the th at the 30-yard line. McMiniman gets his play. Smith Chalice to his left. Crowley in motion, and it's going to be a fake reserve oh, yeah. pass, uh -oh. and, he, and he's got, oh, he had Crowley not really open. Ebert had the coverage on the play, but uh, if he let him, he might have been able to get to him. Yeah, Hebert was there, uh, you know, in coverage, and, uh, you know, one thing that number 40 has is he's got some height on Connor there, so um, if it would have been a little bit more of an accurate pass, uh, that could have been completed. But the Hillers were in position. They have been all year on their defense. Um, they, they're very disciplined, and, you know, Connor was there with coverage. Yeah, and if he, if he could just, if, if McMiniman could have just let him, he had plenty of time with the dipsy do, double reverse kind of stuff going on in a pitch back. Second and 10 on the play, and he hands off. No, he keeps it, and McMiniman, no, that should be. That fumble, should fumble, fumble. I thought fumble. he was down. Yeah, he was down. They're, okay. all, they're all pointing to the ground. Hey, calling it down. He didn't pick up anything. That didn't really fool anybody. I don't think he has the uh, foot speed to really do a whole lot there anyway. I'm not sure why you're running that play uh, three minutes left in a game. It doesn't make any sense. So that uh, brings up third and ten with 2.39 to go. And it's third and ten. So they, they, they have a bit of a – they just made a more difficult for themselves with a play like that unless he missed the handoff. In the shotgun. Oh, he, he, he pitched it. I don't know what. I'm not sure what he just did, Don. I don't know if you were looking at the play, but I thought he was a quick pitch. Looked like a quick pitch that he wasn't but, but ready the, for. No, the back left. Right, yeah. It looked like it was a definitely a miscommunication. And now they're ooh, fourth and forever. Yeah, this is going to be a tough one. Uh, I don't know how you might get Might be a situation going. where they call timeout here. Like, what are we doing? What are they? Yeah, they got to call timeout. Uh, you don't have a play. That you, well, like, no. Yeah, they're, gonna, they're not. I don't know how many they have left, but I, I this would know. be a good time to use one. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even the game. This is right. the game here, man. This uh, is it. And he's going to go, and it's picked off. Oh, Lindquist. Lindquist has the ball. That's going to do it. Linquist picks off the ball, gets it to about the 18-yard line, sits down, and I'm pretty sure we can get into victory formation at this point, Don, and run out the clock with 1.35 to go. Well, I, 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 I don't know how many timeouts are left. Right? They probably could. I know they use a couple. If they got, if they got three, that's all they need. Yeah. So I don't know if it's. I think we could definitely get at the victory formation, but you know, not risk a fumble or anything. But they may have enough timeouts to. To force the Hillers to kind of uh, maybe try and get at least one first down here. I don't know. But uh, Hiller defense, it's been so strong all year. Six shutouts. Really the backbone of this team. And we've been saying that for the last few games. Yeah. You know, without it, a doubt. It, it took us a while to, to, to catch on. We were reading yeah. all the highlights and all the <laughs> touchdowns and blah, blah, blah. And then next thing you know, you're thinking, these guys don't give up any yards or points or anything. And, boy, they have stepped up tonight, man. So Kelher in the shotgun, he just hands off. The oh, a fumble! Oh, no! A fumble on the play with a minute and a half to go. And the Wildcats get it back at the 23-yard line. Oh, my goodness. Well, okay. So, <laughs> you 
Nothing's easy. <laughs> Nothing is easy, Rick. We got a minute thirty. That's a big. Uh, that's a big. That's a big turnover. It almost looked like uh, just a mesh point. It looked like. That's yeah, it. there was I mean, no contact. Yeah, it would look like it was kind of. They kind of had a, a weird exchange. That he did get hit in the backfield. Connor did get hit in the backfield. That's a tough, uh, tough circumstance here. But you know what? A, a, a Hiller defense are still in control here. Absolutely. Let's go. Stay Absolutely. focused. McKenneman in the back in the shotgun, and he's going to throw. And he had a guy wide open looking looking for the ball, and he gets it picked. Oh, should have been picked off. Who is that? Is that Abbott that came up? Yeah. Nah, yeah, Abbott. I think Abbott. No, it's uh, Cousins. So 50, Cousins. 50 What's or, he? Two, or two. That might have been Farina. Cousins I mean, 50. I'm sorry. Back. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's Farina. Might have been Farina. Could have been Abbott. But he had uh, number 13 was wide open. Nobody was covering him. He was jumping up and down asking for the ball. Eddie Haskell didn't get the respect he needed on that play. <laughs> you know, um, so you know Milton, Milton doesn't – they're not scared to run the trick play. you got to watch this here. Well, it's oh, that's, that's a, oh, wow, so a lot flag. of stuff going on. A lot I mean, of stuff going on. That could have been on the Hillers, though, too. No, the, the center didn't snap the ball. That's what it looked like to me. Okay, good. That's a that's big. So you got uh, five yards on the penalty. It'd be second and fifteen. One twenty to go. So the Hillers are getting pressure on this kid um, with their just their down linemen. You know, so I, I'm sitting here thinking, do we want to send a blitz? Do we want to mix it up a little bit? But when you're getting the pressure with Cousins and Brown and the other Brown and and you got McDonald in there. It's uh, it makes it easier on your defensive backs. Absolutely. So he's got uh, Charles Smith in there, and he releases his uh, a wobbly ball off of Crowley's hands. Would have been a first down, but uh, falls incomplete. Brings up third and 15. Crowley was uh, kind of coming down the seam there. It was a wobbly pass. He went up trying to make the play, and uh, fortunately, it bounced off his hands. So. Now you got third and 10. Third and um, 15. Thir I'm sorry, third and 15. The clock is in play here. You only got a minute 15 left. Um, but, you know, you got to figure here you got two downs. Uh, so they could want to just get eight yards here and then go for it. I don't know. Who knows? Let's see. <laughs> I got to quit coaching and just start watching. Yeah, and a screen play to the to the left side, and he's going to get caught from behind. No, he doesn't get caught from behind. And, and he's short of the first down. Hassel, third, uh, short of the first down with a 104 to go. It's going to be about fourth and three, maybe. Milton going to take a timeout. Fourth and two. Fourth and, yeah, fourth and about one, maybe. Yeah, uh, Haskell um, almost was tackled there for no gain. I think that was one of the Brown. I think that was uh, the number 45 Brown. Uh, almost had him by the legs. He got out of that and then made some really nice positive yards. Here we go. We got fourth and um, Buddy Yard, if that. Yeah. Can we get a do, – do we know how many timeouts uh, they have left? Three now. Three now. Okay, we think that we have three timeouts from, left from, from Milton. Milton. So that, that's a lot. <laughs> I mean uh, – that's, that's a game's worth. Yep. <laughs> and especially, uh, you know – I mean, I guess you gotta, you got to think about that, Rick, because – yeah, you can certainly run the ball here. You do not have to pass it, and and the, and the clock stops on the first down, and they they don't run to the sideline. They uh, they they signal in their play, so they can do it pretty pretty quick. But this is the game on the line with this play right here, fourth and one. Woodley in, and it's an option pitch, and he he didn't get it. I don't think he got the first down. He didn't get it. No, it's going to be a turnover on down. So yes. Okay, hey, now you by about a yard. Now you're getting in your victory formation, or you just let uh, just let uh, Kelleher run the ball. Well, yeah, you know you don't need to be handing it off, but you know that's that's an interesting call by Milton. I mean, if there's one spot in the Hiller defense, you're not attacking, you're not going outside with the ball. You know, you're not trying to beat them to the corner. Isaiah Wadley, a pretty quick kid. Know. You know, they hadn't done it all. You know, element of surprise. It maybe. was. It was a new play for sure. Um, but you know the Hillers again. They always stay disciplined. Got pursue very well. Very hard to get around the, the corner and get around our ends and our cornerbacks. And uh, it's just an excellent job there by the defense. Huge stop. But We're I think you. On, I think baby. you would have. I think you would have tried to go straight ahead, right? I mean, but anyway, you second guess all day long. 
Ebert straight up the middle, and he gets loose, and he's got a touchdown. Touchdown, Ebert, with uh, 49 seconds to go from the 18-yard line. That'll wrap it up, Don. That's the nail in the coffin. Uh, that's, uh, you know what? Good for Connor, too, because... Uh, you know, he had that fumble there, and, and uh, Rick, we don't. I, I, we could talk about that Thanksgiving Day a couple of years ago when, when Sammy had that fumble, and I, you know, I, I know the feeling. I looked over, and and poor Mark Hebert's face was white. He looked like a ghost over here. <laughs> well, he's, he's probably he might have been just cold. Oh, he's cold. He's cold too. But you know, now his, his blood flows black, and uh, everybody's happy. And, and that's a way to finish strong. Connor Hebert with a nice, uh, what was that, 22? I'm getting him a 22-yard run. run. Yeah, that's excellent. Excellent. And it's good and it makes it 28 to 13. All right. All right. So, okay, so now we can start talking about the next step here. And, you know, I have, what a, we're doing. I have a buddy that's. Um, oh, this guy, this SSMIA guy. What uh, are we doing? Are we home? Are we away? Where are we going? I, I got a buddy that's got a. Has some connection to Melrose, and earlier today he told me that Melrose was winning 21 to 14 at the half. Okay. So um, I don't know who Melrose is playing though in the Division Four North Finals. So we bring it up with uh, 49. It looks like your Hillers are going to be the South Sectional Division Four champions, a a title they have never held in the football world as they moved to the new format five years ago. And it should be a, a pretty exciting little presentation. Hopefully, game not over, 49 seconds, but uh, it, it looks um, looks good, doesn't it? I, I love it. <laughs> I love it. They, um, you know, the Hillers kind of, you know, took a punch, took a punch, gave a punch, took a punch, gave a punch, gave another punch, and then gave a final punch. And Squib Kick is fielded up front as one of the up guys, number 19 for the Wildcats, recovers the ball after it was touched, Nick Griswold. And 46 seconds to go. You're going to see some fireworks. I'm guessing you're going to see a few guys back around the 30-yard line anyway. Yeah, at this point, you do not want to get and let anybody get behind you. Um, you certainly don't want any big plays. Um, you know, I see some folks heading towards the exit, and, you know, who could blame them with the weather we have here? But, uh, you know, you never know what's going to happen. We still got to get out of here. Been in. Back to throw, it's a wobbly to number 13, Hassel. And he gets out of bounds at the Hiller 45 yard line with 39 seconds to go. Hiller defense is you know, giving them some cushion. Um, that qu uh, quarterback stood in there, took a, a big hit by somebody. I, don't, I didn't see who it was, but delivered a nice strike. Yeah, we, we know he's a, a pretty tough kid. He's just not fleet of foot. Luke McKenna, he's a junior quarterback. You got a lot of juniors on this team that touch the ball, so they could be a, a fairly significant force next year, Don. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, Hopkinton called a timeout here. It looks like Coach McLean, Coach Gerard want to get uh, get the defense on the uh, the same page here. Um, you know, you, you kind of want to play it soft. You don't want to let anybody behind you, but, you know, you don't want to get them down the field here and score too quick, Rick. You never know. Then you got to. You know, you got an onside kick. I mean, heck, I, I saw a college football game last year or two years ago. They scored 21 points in two minutes. So, you know, you got to you gotta finish the game. What was the game I, I was watching? I don't know if it was pro or college. That uh, Instead of doing a Hail Mary, they, they, they threw it underneath, and the guy wiggled his way all the way to the end zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you never, you never know what's going on. You have to finish strong. You have to stay focused. You know, you and I can talk about next week all we want. Yeah, right, right. But those kids on the field they need to finish the job. Now, my understanding is it's a neutral site for the, I'll call it Eastern Mass Finals between the North and South. McMenamin in, in the shotgun, and he's looking, looking, looking. He's going to get chased from behind, and he, that's a forward pass. I don't think it was a fumble. It was a forward pass. Yeah, it's an incomplete. Um, you know, Brown came from the side. Looked like he was being held a little bit. Fought that off. Hit the kid very hard. Um, you know, as he was throwing. Yeah. And um, that, you know, that was a big play. Well, Kyle Cousins let Mr. Hassel know he's still involved in the game. When he picked up the ball, thinking it was a fumble, he let him know. <laughs> Cousins has been a little quiet tonight. Um, I haven't called his number. He's played a great year all year. Um, but, yeah, if he has an opportunity to clock somebody, he's going to. Mm -hmm. 
McMenamin rolling. And short, short hops. It looks like the intended receiver was Hassel again. So that stops the clock, third and 10, with 25 seconds to go. Pocket kind of collapsed there, uh, rolled out, and uh, Hillers had that covered. Yeah, this is a tough. Very this, well. this is a tough high school thing to do. Be throwing every down when you know, you know, two or three guys are going to be deep, and you got man underneath. Thank you so much. Mc, McMenamin back, and there's a screen, and juggled by Smith Charles, and off he goes, and he's down. First down to the 30-yard line. Maybe the 29-yard line, 16 seconds to go. That was a, that was a well-executed screen pass there. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, the Hillers, um, Hillers, you know, the, this kid's fast, but he's not faster than, you know, 11 Hillers, and the Hillers tracked him down there. And uh, what do we figure? We got about three plays here, Rick, 16 seconds. Yeah, left. probably maybe two, depending on what happens. But, uh, yeah, they got, I mean, uh, Three plays, then you got to get an onside kick to do anything. So, you know, as we've been kind of saying that the nail's getting deeper and deeper into the coffin. Well, you know, what we're looking at here is we will be the south sectional. If we finish this off, we're going to be the south sectional champions, um, which is the first time in Hopkinton history. I mean, they haven't had this format for many years, but... This is the first time that we've uh, been in this uh, this uncharted territory. And a heave into the end zone. It's up high, and it's caught by number is number eight, Woods, on the catch. Shane Cooney on the tackle. It gets it down to about the nine-yard line. First and goal with eight seconds to go. Don, they have to score right here and have something magical happen. <laughs> but yeah. we, we've been down this road with uh, Milton before. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, again, I'm not... I just want to see double Z, you know, all the zeros on, yeah, on the, the clock. Yeah, the time run off. Oh. And it's going to be picked. Oh, he caught it. He caught it. Touchdown. He caught it, but there's zero. There's no, zero, there's zero, no, no time. time left on the clock. So there's be no chance for a kick of any sort. They're going to talk about this a little bit. I don't think that play took eight seconds, but. I, I was thinking the same thing. Um, I don't know. You know, they, they also keep the clock, clock. on the well, field. That's the official clock. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, they're calling somebody something. But did, I didn't see who caught that. I'll, I'll give it to. Uh, I'll give it to Crowley. That is that, that, the game. That's ball game. Well, that's, they called it the game. Okay. Crowley scores at the at, with no time left to make this final score. 28 to 19, but you are now watching the final handshake of the South Division Four final champions. This has been this has been a fantastic run, Rick, and it is just so exciting. And it's going to continue. And I, you know, I guess. Um, they're going to have a trophy type of presentation here. I, I saw some MIAA officials. I haven't seen any hardware, but um, we'll see if they pull that out. Um, you know, Rick, I, I guess we don't know what we're doing now. Uh, we're not sure who we're <laughs> no, playing. Oh, no, we know what we're oh, doing. We know what we're doing right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but as far as next Friday, you know, where they're going to be playing? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm already, I've already given up enough Friday nights here. I don't think my wife's going to talk to me much. But well, I'll give up one more next week. Uh, what are you doing? Uh, well, I'm coming in from the West Coast, so right. I, I'll guess I'll be ready to go. All right. <laughs> so we'll see where we are and if we want to take the, you know, if it is an indeed an away game or a uh, neutral site game, whether we do want or able to cover it, um, I guess it's yet to be seen. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, I'll certainly be here for another Friday, as I said. Uh, right, you got the, the, you know, next you know, week. Now, now next week's game, that means the chip, trip to Gillette. Yes, I it mean, does. E even it does. If they do play the Division Four at Gillette. I know some games. Uh, are, they, they are playing the, this year at Division Four. Did you, did you I see saw the that schedule? on the MIA website. Oh, excellent. Okay, cool. They will rotate games through, but I'm pretty sure Division Four awesome. is on. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I'm looking here. I don't see an MIAA representative with it. Oh, yes, they're moving it. They're... 
Going to do it here at, at uh, with good sportsmanship by the Milton Wildcats hanging no, around. Nice. Um, and, uh, you know, that's got to be one of the toughest feelings when you're on the other side. You, you gave it all you had, and uh, yeah, you got to watch the other team get the trophy. That's a First, that's a tough nugget to swallow. Uh, Ashland's been used to it. Oh! Oh! <laughs> um, ouch! I know. Oh, oh but that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Brzezinski. <laughs> yeah, he'll hear about it. <laughs> um, but I'll, I'll tell you what, the, the, this Hiller team beat a good team here. This yes. Milton team, you know, I've been sitting here and we've been saying, well, Division Four, they, well, you know, what level are we playing, who are we playing? This Milton team was a good football team. Yep. So, and the Hillers beat them, and they took their best punch, and they beat them. Yeah, they were winded in the first play of the game, but yet uh, were able to regroup. And then, you know, an, an interesting uh, strategy tonight, too. There was very little. Th now, that could have been weather-related and whatnot, but they certainly um, um, were able to, you know, take that hit. And, Don, I just got a score here, and it looks like, uh, Melrose will be playing uh, Hopkinton next week, 28-20 uh, to 20 win. Okay. So we'll 28-20 to 20 Melrose um, in the Division 4 North. Do we know where the game will be played? At Weymouth High. It, okay, so somebody, uh, we're getting a, a preliminary report. Not, a, not official, but preliminary that it's out of out of Weymouth. Where's Weymouth at? Weymouth, down south. They'll be in the southern part of the state because we're in the, oh, yeah. you know, oh, far south. Uh, Weymouth, uh, Braintree, okay, Quincy, yeah. okay. in that area. Right, 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 right. Okay. Um, a good ride. I hope the Torosian allows us to get on the team bus or yeah. whatever to be able to make that well, trip. I actually you know. worked. I kind of worked down that way, so I, I don't know. We'll figure that out. But you know, you know, Torosian's not going to give us much of a per diem. Well, yeah, but don't you He's know? He's not going to give us meal money. There we go. The Hill is putting right. that trophy up. That's good stuff right there. The captain's accepting the trophy, and uh, terrific stuff for Coach Gerard and his staff. Um, they're the type of of coaching staff that will tell you that uh, the players make the coaches, and this year they've got a fine set of players. As we've said all year, the defense has been spectacular, and it's really showed in the playoff run. The offense has done enough to do what they have to do to, to, to get the win, and tonight I think you nailed it on the head, Don. This is a pretty good football team that matched us athletically, yep. and we took it to them. Yeah, no, we, we stayed calm. Coaches stayed calm. Players stayed calm, and uh, they earned everything, even right down to the end here. So, um good stuff I'm proud of these kids um, proud to be a Hiller fan and looking forward to next week already and terrific sportsmanship by some of the uh, yeah. the, the, the Milton Wildcats coming over to congratulate the the Hillers and it's um you know that's good stuff uh, to, to see that they they have nothing to be ashamed of they they didn't quit they, they stayed right to the end and uh, who knows if they had another second to go on the clock you, you don't know what would have happened but we're not going to recap the game. We're going to call it yep. a night with the Division Four South Hiller Champions moving on to the Eastern Mass Division Four Finals. For Don Lehman, I'm Rick DeSener and the entire crew that's been out in the cold. Good night. We'll see you next week.